Aloha mai kako, and good morning. This is the January 6th, 2022 Land Use Commission meeting, which is being held using interactive technology, linking video conference participants and other individuals from the public who are interested in these matters via the Zoom internet conferencing program. We're doing this, of course, to comply with ongoing state and county official operational directives during the still ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Members of the public are able to view the meeting via the Zoom webinar platform. For all meeting participants, I wanna urge that you speak slowly, clearly, and directly in your microphone, into your microphone because we generate the transcripts from the recording of this Zoom meeting. It's important that you identify yourself prior to, the speak, prior to speaking for the record. In addition, please know that we, again, are recording this meeting. So if you do not wish to be recorded as part of this meeting, you should leave the meeting now. This technology allows each meeting participant individual access to the meeting via our own personal digital devices. Due to that and due to matters entirely outside of our control or usually outside of our control, occasional disruptions to connectivity may occur from time to time. If that happens, please, let us know and please be patient as we try to restore audiovisual signals so we can continue, can continue to conduct business effectively during the pandemic. For any members of the public who wish to testify during this meeting and who are accessing this meeting via Zoom software, there is a raise your hand function that you can use to indicate your desire to give testimony. If, however, you were accessing this meeting by telephone, use the star nine key sequence to indicate a desire to give testimony. You don't need to raise your hand now. Um, I saw a hand go up. Um, I will announce when we're ready for public testimony on this matter. Um, in addition, if you're accessing this meeting via phone, you press star six to um, request to be unmuted. My name is Jonathan Lee K.K. Schroeder. I have the very distinct honor and pleasure of serving as the Land Use Commission Chair. We currently have eight seated commissioners of a possible nine, along with me, Commissioner Don Chang, Commissioner Arnold Wong, Commissioner Edmund Axon, and our Chief Executive Officer, Daniel Oradanker, our Planner, Chief Planner, Scott Derrickson, our Staff Planner, Riley Hakoda, our Chief Clerk, Natasha Quinones, and our Deputy Attorney General, Deputy Attorney General, Deputy Attorney General, are they here yet? Mr. Ordinker? Sure, I tried to raise him. I just noticed he was uh, not in the audience. Um, I couldn't get a hold of him. We anticipate the short arrival of our Deputy Attorney General, Mr. Dan Morris. And we are all on the island of Oahu. Nancy Cabral is on Hawaii Island by phone for this portion of the meeting. Good morning, Nancy. Yes, I'm here. Hello, aloha, I'm here. <laughs> Commissioner Lee Ohigashi is on the island of Maui. And Commissioner Dan Giovanni is on the island of Kauai. I note, and I will repeat this a few times, Commissioner Gary Okuda has recused himself from the matters being discussed in today's meeting. With all of that said, our next agenda item and our only agenda item for today is an action item regarding conformance of the city and county of Honolulu's important agricultural lands recommendations to applicable statutory and procedural requirements, where we will consider whether or not the city and county of Honolulu's recommendations for the designation of important agricultural lands on the island of Oahu complies with the requirements of sections 205.47, 20548 and 20549 Hawaii revised statutes, and whether the proper procedural, legal, statutory, and public notice requirements were met in developing the recommendations. The lands that have been recommended for de designation are listed in Appendix H of the City and County of Honolulu's IAL petition, which, along with meeting materials, are available for public review and have been available for public review in advance of this meeting at the LUC website. The commission will not be considering or determining at this meeting any legal rights, duties, or privileges of specific landowners or issues related to particular properties. I'll just restate for the record, Commissioner Okuda has recused himself from this matter. The last time the commission heard this matter was on October 21st, 
via Zoom of 2021 via the Zoom internet conferencing technology. With all of that said, will the parties please identify yourselves for the record? Morning, Chair uh, and Commissioners. Dawn Apuna, uh, Deputy Director of DPP. Also with me um, is Franz Kranz. And then I think in the waiting area is Dina Wong and Brandon Sue, but they will probably join uh, Franz when it's at probably after public testimony. Thank you, Ms. Apuna. Office Planning. Uh, Allison Cotto, Deputy Attorney General for the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Uh, also here are Rodney Punakoshi and Mary Alice Evans from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Thank you, Thank you. Ms. Cotto. And Department of Agriculture. Oh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, Earl Yamamoto here for the Department of Agriculture. Uh, just myself. Thank you very much, Carl. Since it's been some time since this matter was heard by the commission, I'm going to review where the commission was in our proceedings at the end of our last hearing. We have already had the county give their presentation on how they conducted their IAL recommendation process and the Office of Planning, then called the Office of Planning, now called the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, as well as the Department of Agriculture provided their positions on the process and their recommendations. The public has had multiple opportunities to provide testimony on the submitted City and County of Honolulu proposed IAL recommendations. Since then, the Land Use Commission went into executive session to discuss the matter with our Deputy Attorney Generals with regard to some key legal issues, and that resulted in a request for a publishable opinion and a stay of the proceedings. The last hearing we held on this matter was limited to the acceptance of the Attorney General's opinion and the decision to make the decision public. We're now therefore ready to proceed with the completion of our initial evaluation and decision-making process on whether or not the county recommendations meet the requirements of chapter 205. I'll give a further little detailed history. On December 14th, 2021, the LUC made filled out notice letters and agenda to property owners about today's hearing. On December 23rd, we mailed and emailed today's meeting agenda to the parties and to the statewide county and IAL agenda mailing lists. On December 29th, the Department of Planning and Permitting filed a supplemental brief to its recommendation regarding important agricultural lands. Also on that date, the commission received testimony from a charitable foundation corporation. Since our last hearing on October 21st, um, the commission has received extensive additional testimonies, almost all of which have been posted to our website. The ones that have not been posted to our website are the ones that started to arrive at the very end of yesterday and through the end of business yesterday. They will be posted to the website and they have been emailed to the commissioners. So let me now go over how we're going to go forward with our work today. First, I'm going to recognize the written testimony that has been submitted in this matter. Um, hold on one second. Um, Commissioner Giovanni? I'd just like the record to note that Mr. Morris showed up at 9.07 and has been party to the, to the record. Thank you very much. Um, so first I'll recognize the written testimony that's been submitted since the last time I reviewed testimony that's been submitted in this matter. Um, then I'm going to call for um, people who wish to give oral testimony on this matter. And now is the time if you want to start to raise your hands, use the raise your hand function or star, star nine sequence. Um, and I will call on people in order. Um, when you get called in, you will become a panelist. You will then be able to, and you'll need to enable your audio and video. I will swear you in. Um, I will ask you to identify your name and address for the record. And then given the volume of today's business, I will ask people to limit their testimony to two minutes. We will then go through all of the testimony. And then finally, at the completion of any oral testimony on this matter, I will call on the county of Honolulu, city and county of Honolulu to make their final comments. 
after that, we will allow the commissioners to ask questions of the county. I may provide the opportunity for OPSD and DOA to provide any final comments as well as an and offer the opportunity um, for the commissioners to ask questions to them. And based on all of that, the commission will determine if and how, if we do proceed regarding the city and county's submittal. To the parties in this matter and to the commissioners, are there any questions on our procedures today, starting with the city and county? No questions. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto. No questions. Thank you. Commissioners, are we clear? Okay. So um, I'm gonna say a couple more things before I start in on testimony. Um, one is just to really re-emphasize to people who are offering testimony, we are still in the first phase of deliberations, which is just to determine whether or not the requirements of chapter 205 have been met by the city and county in preparing their recommendations. We're not today addressing whether or not individual lands are appropriate for IL designation or not. So testimony that is limited to whether or not the city has met the requirements of chapter 205 and comments related to 205 are the best comments to make and are most germane to this matter. If the commission decides that the county has met the requirements of chapter 205, then individual property owners will be given the opportunity to present their case as to whether or not their property should or should not be designated as IL at a later date or set of hearings. Now, if you give me one moment, I'm gonna to start to read the list of testimony that we've received since our last meeting on this matter. Since our October meeting, um, in November, well, I'll start in October, um, and the 127th written testimony we received on this matter was from Kalani Morris Esquire from the Durrett Law Firm, Leilani Clayton for Mililani Tech Park, and Mike Ford. In November, we received testimony from the Honolulu Youth Commission, Bronson Azama. In December, of 2021, we received three pieces of testimony from Glory Ann Ahuna Hoapili, Valentio, Valentino Day, and a Charitable Foundation Corporation. In January of this year, in preparation for this hearing, we've received testimony from Alicia Maluafiti, Lori Iwohi, Stephen Mao, Robinson Cunia Land LLC, Thomas and Janet Witten. Gen two pieces of testimony from Jennifer Lim, Jesse Onaga, Sophie Manansala, April Colt, Bradley Dixon, Waihonu North LLC, Steve Hogue, Triple G Stables, Zachary McNish, Clarence Nakata, EC Sores Hi Hai, Jeff Bloom, Blade and Charmaine Mossman, might be Charmaine. Chris Hogue, Peter Savio, Harris Ranch LLC, YNI Solar LLC, Jody Yamamoto, Linda Baptiste, Kalani Morris, Yvonne Watari, Doreen Cooper, Ronald and Mary Tubbs, John McCalson, Laura Johnson, Crystal Posiulai, Diana Young, Harrison Gu, Nodi Nambahada, Peter Opdahl, Rachel, Rochelle Ito, Lulik Haydar, Wes and Karen Wong, Armani de Ocampo, Valentino de Ocampo, Mordecai and the Mordecai and Ruth Hudson Trust, Christopher and Jacqueline Laird, Diana Puule, Fred Radolo. I believe there's a misspelling here in my list, I apologize. Arnold and Jerry Lum. Tim Irons, Philip Rogers, Elizabeth Piazzi, Holly Kim, Jason Leue, Barry Bright, Phyllis Dudua, Reynold and Doreen Cooper, Francis Kama Silva, Andrew Cook, Lawrence Green, and Michael Cam. And as I noted, 
over the last evening, we've received some additional pieces of testimony that have been shared with the commissioners um, and provided to us. With that said, I'm now going to call for oral testimony on this matter. If you wish to provide oral testimony, use the raise your hand function, and I will call on you in order. I will start with Alicia Maluafiti, followed by Alexander Garber. As I let in Ms. Malu Maluafiti, the last thing I want to note, since there are many people who have perhaps never been to a land use commission meeting before, um, the nine possible members of the LUC or eight of us currently are all volunteers. Um, we all have other lives, but we choose to do this work um, to make our financial disclosures and to be nominated by the governor and confirmed by the Senate in order to serve Hawaii. So that's our background. And I have promoted Ms. Malua Fiti to be a panelist. If you would enable your audio and video. Hi, good morning. Aloha. Do Aloha. You, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna swear you in, ask you to identify your name and address for the record and then give you two, two minutes to testify. So do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Mahalo, please proceed. Thank my name is Alicia Malua Fiti. I live at 91302 Eva Beach Road, Eva Beach, 96706. I own Ag 2 land in Nanakuli, and I'm, I, I know you guys are all volunteers, and um, I know that you should not be receiving the wrath of uh, the testifiers, but I'm sure you know that this is a very frustrating process. Let me tell you, you know, when the city comes and appraises your property, you get a an opportunity to appeal that appraisal. I, if we don't have a process right now in place for appealing the, the designation of IAL by the city, then we need it. If we don't have it, I will tell you right now, I got three weeks to introduce a bill, the legislature, to give landowners that option. I know you're not here to tell me that my, whether my, for me to tell you my property should or should not be designated as IAL, but I'm just looking at the process that they, the city followed. And that is, is that they never once came out and looked at my property to determine whether or not it, the recommendations should stick. My property is half underwater, not because of the recent floods, but because of a stream that the city has failed to maintain and which is now flooding part of my property. Um, I bought the property to do what you guys are all doing just as a volunteer animal lover. And it came with 300 cats. Guess what you can't do with cats on your property? You can't grow produce. And no one's coming in to take away or kill 300 cats, least of all me, because I love them. So there's a lot of issues. Kiave from one end to the other. Would the city like to come in and take a look at my property and tell me, Who's going to pay the 30000 to grub my land of all the Kiave and everything else, six foot high California grass? I'm pretty sure the city and the state is not ready to come up and help us landowners get our lands ready as designated important ag land so we can go pro produce to feed the state. It's just not going to happen. Thank you, Jonathan. Am I out of time? Yeah, thank you. If you could summarize. I would just like to know specifically for the property owners, if you could tell us if there is an appeals process in place, and if not, that's something we should be working on as the commission takes this into advisement as far as accepting the city's process for designation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and if nobody else addresses it, I will address it at the end of questions. I'm going to offer, and this is for all people who wish to testify, when, stay on and the parties and then the commissioners have a chance to ask you questions, starting with um, the city and county. Questions for the witness? No questions. Thank you. OPSD? Uh, no questions. Mr. Yamamoto? No questions. Commissioners, beginning with Commissioner Wong. Thank you, Chair. Um, Ms. Malufiti, I have a question. Um, you know your property in Nanakuli. How many acres was it again? I have two TMKs, 2.3 acres each. 2.3. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. Further questions, commissioners? Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you. Uh, 
Are you, uh, just for the testifier, are you familiar with the county's process to the extent that there was a um, option to apply for an exemption from an IAL designation? Not aware of really anything that has happened on the, and by the way, I lobby for agriculture. So I've been part of the IAL discussion and process, but I'm not aware of any exemption. Um, the last letter that I got was from a bunch of attorneys and they were the ones that kind of prompted many of us. I'll be honest, I, I if you saw my property, you'd be questioning it, it too. Yeah, no, I'm not asking about your specific property, but, but more about Whether the county yeah. process by which you could or could not apply for an exemption and whether or not you did, but whether or not you were informed about it and were you know, apprised of that option if it, if it did exist. You're saying you did not, is that correct? I'm not aware of receiving anything. I don't live at the property, so, um, but I have to admit, I mean, I work in, I work in this area and I don't remember receiving anything. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Commissioners, further questions? Um, call am I? Somebody's audio is, okay. Um, so just to repeat, um, should the commission today decide that determine that the city and county has met the requirements of 205, um, then the commission will provide an opportunity for every affected landowner, the opportunity to um, essentially, in your words, appeal or contest um, the designation of their individual property. We're just not to that point yet. Um, Thank you. I do have a question for you, however, given your extensive experience, including in the drafting of 205, um, or at least the, the involvement while the legislature was drafting 205 and this portion of 205. Do you believe that the distinctions made in the law between the allowable uses on IAL small properties versus regularly agriculturally designated small properties, particularly as regards to their use for housing and how housing is allowed, do you think that um, the differences in those statute, in those two portions of the statute, how housing is allowed in non-IL ag lands and how housing is allowed in IL ag lands, do you think that the distinctions that exist in the law were fully appreciated by the legislature when the law was passed? Well, I wasn't part of the crafting drafting process. I came in um, after the law had passed, but I will tell you this, the, I guess what you're talking specifically about is the spirit and intent of the law when they drafted it and submitted it for, uh, for passage. And this is from the Farm Bureau, by the way, I can't speak for the Farm Bureau, but the intention was to preserve large tracts of really high level soy, soil quality lands, not this, this patchwork quilt of tiny two acre, two and a half acre properties. And unfortunately for a lot of the farmers, you, I can't even lease my property without housing on it. God forbid you could get even electrical or a septic tank or anything else on your property. So I think the problem has been not just the IAL designation and all the things that we're no longer allowed to do, but what if you really are looking at food security and agricultural sustainability, then the, the IAL, how, they, how the city and state, sorry, has implemented this is, is weak beyond words. You, everybody has lost the spirit and intent of that I, process I, to preserve the I, land, those lands. I guess if my question is, do you believe that's an issue with the city, say for instance, how they've implemented it or structural problems with the statute itself? I can't speak to the structural problems. I would say that the city has been um, less than effective in allowing agriculture to flourish. It's been their processes in general, even the last question about what I may or may not have received um, for the exemption. I think that the city is, sadly, a little bit deep in bureaucracy and has not, does not really understand the perspective of farmers and property owners who are trying to make these lands viable for some kind of use. 
So does that answer your question better? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any further questions for the witness? If not, thank you very much for your testimony as well as for your written testimony on this matter. I'm going to um, move you back to be a panelist. I will admit Alexander Garber followed by Michael Kahn. And again, if you wish to testify, offer oral testimony on this matter, you use this raise your hand function if you are accessing this via Zoom software or star nine if you are calling in. Mr. Garber, if you would raise, uh, if you would enable your audio and video. Hello? Can you, can you hear morning. me? Yes, I can. Um, Good morning. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Uh, I do. Thank you. So if you'd state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, uh, Alexander Garber, and uh, I live at 66603 Calpe Road uh, in Wailua, uh, 96791. Thank you. Please proceed. Um, so I think you transitioned into my testimony quite well. Um, and I want to thank you for allowing me to, to again address the committee. Uh, I think there's multiple concerns with the IL statute and the way the DPP has attempted to implement it. Uh, today in my testimony, I'll focus on the additional requirements the IL statute places on the occupants of farm dwellings. This is important to me because I, it directly affects- how All right, Mr. My Garber, you're yes. slightly fading in and out on the, your audio. Um, I'm, I'm, sorry, not sure, you, I'm not sure why. Can you, can you hear me better now? That's better, thank you. Okay. so. Um, the issue of the use of farm dwelling is very important to me because it affects how my family and I currently use our, our land and our farm and how we intend to use it in the future. If you just read the relevant statutes, I think any reasonable person uh, would conclude that the IL statute is significantly more restrictive than the agricultural designation statute. In fact, during her April 29th testimony to the commission, when Commissioner Wong asked Deputy Director Donna Puna if the IAL statute would prohibit my three-year-old from living in our home, the Deputy Director read the statute and answered, I believe it could be interpreted that way. That's a big concern. Obviously, it's a concern for me and my daughter, but it's also a concern for DPTP because during the little outreach that they did do to the community, it was repeatedly documented that they told owners that the IAL would not affect their farm dwellings or their ability to live in them. Deliberately or inadvertently, the DPP repeatedly spread this false information. No reasonable person can possibly conclude that that satisfies the law's requirement for outreach and engagement. I think DPP realized that this was a problem. So since that, was that testimony, the DPP director, Dean Pachita, and Mary Evans from the Office of Planning have submitted documents in which they attempt to convince you the two statutes are essentially the same. When you read these documents, I would like you to ask yourself, are these honest, impartial assessments of the statutes or are they deliberate contortions of the language which these very intelligent and creative people use to drive you to a conclusion that serves the author's purpose? I think you know the answer to that question. I can ask you to summarize. Okay, I think you know the answer to that question. Um, and if you have any doubt, I ask you to please go read the statutes 205.45A4 and 2.545.5 again. And then I think it'll be obvious that those are not the same. If they're not the same, I think you need to vote to reject the DPP's recommendation in regard to any parcel that contains a permitted farm dwelling. If you don't, uh, I'd ask you to please give me specific steps I can take to appeal this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Questions for the witness, Ms. Apuna. No questions. OPSD, Ms. Cotto. Ms. Cotto. Or anybody else from OPSD. Hi, it is Rodney, no questions. Thank you, Rodney. Mr. Yamamoto. No questions. Commissioners. Commissioner Chang. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Garber. Thank you again for being here and 
providing your testimony. Appreciate it. Um, how long have you owned the property? Uh, we purchased it in 2013. And how big is your property? Uh, it's six and a half acres. Okay. And um, can you tell me currently, what's the agricultural activity that you're doing on the property? Uh, so we, uh, we farm uh, multiple um, uh, fruit crops. So we have star fruit, lychee, um, long gone, uh, mango, uh, avocado, and uh, um, we use that ourselves. We barter with uh, the neighbors and we uh, sell to uh, multiple uh, uh, different retailers. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioners, further questions for the witness? Um, if I may, Mr. Garber, um, I think you laid out a couple possibilities um, on the way different parties are interpreting the differences between those two sections of the statute. Do you think there's a third possibility that um, given the way the statutes are worded, that reasonable people could come to opposite conclusions? Um, well, which, I mean, which, I, which I would, if I may, which would point to not a flaw so much in the interpreters as with the authors of the statute. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do agree with, with uh, Ms. Apuna, who did say, you know, after she stated that it could be interpreted to mean that you couldn't have anyone disabled or young or old living in your farm dwelling. She didn't say it. She didn't think that was the intent. And I'm not sure what the intent is. But I am very concerned that I would be placed into this group when, regardless of intent, that statute could be interpreted to mean um, that we can't live in our home if we become disabled or elderly or the very young. Um, and I think that because of that, I think the city and county has went about this backwards, right? They should so go th back. So th I'm just going to ask you to just focus on the, the question that I asked. So you've answered it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, any further questions for Mr. Garber? Um, if not, thank you very much for your testimony. I'm going to read off the next few testifiers who I'm going to be admitting. Um, Michael Cam, followed by Donald Kilmer, followed by Caridad Leiva, followed by Jeff Bloom and Sunny Sue. Um, I am promoting Mr. Cam. Again, if you wish to testify in this matter, use the raise your hand function or the star sequence, the key sequence star nine. Now that you're admitted, Mr. Cam, if you would enable your audio and video. Okay. Okay, I can hear you. There we go. Aloha. Good morning. Hi. Do you swear or um, affirm the start? testimony that oh. you're about to give us the truth? Uh, yes. Okay. So if you'd state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, Michael Cam, 2372 Ainalani Way, Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, but I have a farm out on the North Shore in Wailua. Mahalo. Okay, Please continue. Um, before I start, I, I would like to note that I did receive notice of this meeting, um, but it was received in my New York address. I recently uh, came back after retirement to Hawaii, uh, and it was texted to me by my wife yesterday. So I've had very little time to, pre to organize and prepare for this. And I will say that I, to my knowledge, and, and I could have received things in the past, but to my knowledge, this was the first thing that we've ever received from the city. Uh, regarding IAL. Um, very supportive of IAL, but I but it is uh, just want to note the factual. It, it could have been that I missed it. I'm not saying it's the DPP's fault, could be the postal, whatever. But let me get started. Um, my, my notes concern the AG opinion. I believe it's embarrassingly flawed, cannot be reasonably relied upon, and should not be relied upon by the LUC. Um, the opinion is correct in stating that all eight of the statutory factors to designate IAL land um, must be weighed. 
that means that each of the eight factors needs to be considered and a weight attached to it. In order for those fa each of those factors to be considered a factual record of some sort, uh, being practical, needs to be created and, be a, and, 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 and thought of. It is, it is inconsistent and incorrect to state that the, the city could base its decision on IAL designation on a single factor or fewer than eight factors. Um, that just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I would note that uh, the a AG opinion also states and concludes that the city is allowed to consider things on a countrywide, countywide basis. I'm sorry, countywide basis. If you look at the factors, I think it's fair to say that it depends on a variety of county, state, and local factors and individual parcel factors. To give a good example, the availability of water is- If I, if I can ask you to start to summarize your testimony. Sure. What my, basically, the aging opinion is fatally flawed and to rely on it would, would only set back and further delay the IAL designation. Um, I, I would like an opportunity to further supplement my remarks since I, that, since uh, with written further risk testimony, if that's possible. Uh, but I'll make that request and you can decide later whether to allow that. Okay, well, we um, always accept written testimony till the end of our proceedings. Okay, terrific. So, thank you so much. Questions for the witness, Ms. Apuna. Uh, just one question, Mr. Tam. Uh, what is the TMK or the address for your Wailua farm? Um, six, I think it's six, seven, uh, two, fourteen. Okay, thank you. OPSD. Uh, no questions. Mr. Yamamoto. No, no questions. Commissioners, Commissioner Chang. Thank you, um, Mr. Kim, thank you for your testimony this morning. You seem to be a very learned person. Um, one, let me ask you uh, similar questions. How long have you owned the property? Um, I don't remember exactly, um, but perhaps uh, at least seven years, okay. um, but, but I've only come back to Honolulu um, I had a tenant on the property that was, I bought it from Dole and it was, tenant was under for 20 years. I gave them an opportunity to stay for three years at the same rent of a dollar per acre per year okay. uh, to allow them time to find other uh, farmland. And how many acres um, do you have? I have 26 acres and we're not to talk about individual characteristics, but my land is bisected by the uh, King Hall access road that leads to the overpass on Farrington Highway. So you physically can't, impractical to drive a tractor from one side of my property to the other side. Okay. But it's um, a good sized property, yeah. This is the final question. Um, part of the intent of chapter 205 was to provide incentives to farmers and you seem to be familiar with the chapter. Um, I, I understand one, you said you support IAL but you have a concerns regarding the, the AG opinion. Um, in, in your view, would you be more inclined to support the designation of your property into IAL if the city had adopted incentives to farmers to support sustainable ag? Yeah, I mean, that's one of my gripes, right? Is that I actually was considering voluntarily and I intend to voluntarily uh, pursue an IAL designation uh, as to a portion of my land. However, um, the quid pro quo is that if you know you want to support sustainable agriculture, which and and the provision of the statute that allows up to fifteen percent of the land to be redesignated as another use, non agriculture use, is an important incentive when you consider that land is being dedicated arguably in perpetuity for agriculture. You know, no one knows whether agriculture will be sustainable uh, in perpetuity, right? So. That incentive in particular is one that uh, I'm very interested in. There's been very little information. The city and county has done extraordinary little to publicize and work on creating uh, viable incentives to encourage landowners such as myself to voluntarily dedicate land 
and avoid all this, you know, noise regarding designation. Thank you. Um, you've, you've, you've more than answered my question. I appreciate that, Mr. Kim. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioners, any further questions for the witness? Um, seeing none, welcome home. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much for your testimony today. I'm going to move you to be an attendee. Um, I will admit Donald Kilmer, followed by Jeff Bloom, Sunny Tsu, and Brian Miyamoto. <clears throat> um, as Mr. Kilmer is coming in, um, I did, neglected to note in my review of proceedings, which I usually do, that we tend to take about a 10 minute break every hour or so, um, so that everybody can give their full attention to the proceedings at hand. So we'll go to about 9.50 and take a break. Mr. Kilmer, could you enable your audio and video, please? Oh, I think I did. Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you? Yeah, now we can see you as well. Welcome. Okay. Um, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Okay. State your name and address for the record and then proceed. Donald Kilmer. My address is 94 507 Lanikuhana Avenue in Mililani. And my farm is. Uh, in Waialua at 65-670 Kalkonahua Road. Thank you, please proceed. So my, my point is that there is that um, all of the add-ons, the odious add-ons as I look at them and as most small farmers look at them for the, for the IAL designator is, are, uh, seem to me unnecessary. So my question is why not just say that the IAL lands cannot be changed from the from ag lands to commercial or residential and leave it at that or or make the change such a change uh, extremely difficult or have to much more difficult than other agricultural land and leave it at that that as it as things are all of the odious add-ons seem like disincentives for farmers especially for farmers to live on on their own land and especially for small farmers. That is, I, I, it's quite possible that people like Dole or the uh, Kamehameha lands might not object to it, but it, it's very, makes anything uh, a, like these add-ons make, the, uh, make it very difficult for small farmers. So th that's, that's all I have to say. And I would, I would, I would very much um, appreciate an explanation of why these add-ons, the odious add-ons are necessary. Thank you very much for your testimony. Questions for the witness, Ms. Apuna. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kilmer. Can I ask you, uh, how large is your property, your farm? So it's five acres. Five acres. And would you be uh, willing to participate in you know, surveys or other ways of informing the county of how we can assist farmers such as yourself? Sure, I would appreciate that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kilmer. Thank no you, question. Ms. Apuna. Okay, um, nothing from OPSD, Up Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioners. Um, if no, if there's no questions from commissioners, I will respond to your inquiry, Mr. Kilmer, um, and just, Sorry if this comes across wrong, but we didn't write the statute, right? We have the task of implementing the statute. I was not in the room when the legislature negotiated the statute and why it chose to structure the various requirements, incentives, and disincentives around IAL. Um, we certainly are seeing, um, at least I'm personally seeing, issues with how the statute was drafted in terms of its ability to be implemented rationally. I think your questions are very good ones. Um, but we're probably not the best body to be answering those questions because we did not put those requirements into place. Does that make sense as a response, sir? Yes, yes, sir, it does. It, that's, uh, I understand your position. That is very much appreciated and we understand yours as well. We really appreciate your ability and you're taking the time to testify in front of us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Okay. Anything further for the witness? Seeing none, I'm going to move you back to being an attendee. I'm going to admit Jeff Bloom, followed by Sunny Su, Brian Miyamoto, and Karidad Leva. Um, I seem to be having some technical difficulty in bidding Mr. Oh, there he, no. I'm having some technical difficulties promoting Mr. There we go. Oh, he declined to be promoted to be a panelist. Um, Mr. Bloom, you have your hand raised to be, in, to provide testimony. Um, I'm going to move on to the next witness and we'll try again. Sunny Tsu, followed by Brian Miyamoto, followed by Karidad Leiva, followed by Bobby Correa, and then Jeff Blue. Ms. Tsu, good morning. Could you enable your audio and video? Hello. Hi, good morning. Hi, can you hear me and see me? Yes, both. Oh, so I'm going to swear you in and then ask you to state your name and address for the record and then give your testimony. Do you swear sure. or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Okay, please I proceed. Swear. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I really uh, thank you for these uh, opportunities. And, and you can tell that English is my second language. And so I will try my best to, you know, um, to testimony our position for this uh, IAL. Um, actually, I got this, uh, your notice uh, from my husband actually a couple of days ago. And uh, I actually want my son to attend this meeting. Somehow he's very busy and he already have a pre-assigned um, appointment already. And he's in LA, he's not in Honolulu. And so I will try to explain it, uh, how we think about this IAL. Because um, we, as a family that's starting the farm, uh, farming life uh, since 1980, 1978, we started from Waimanalo. And after like about 15 years, uh, actually in 1985, we need to make the decision to move to somewhere else because our, our lease land uh, being taken away by Oha, they built a bunch of the housing on, the, on, on, on those lots, on those farm lots. So we need to uh, move on because we actually doing our uh, lifestyle as a farmers in, in actually Oahu, basically. And some we have uh, delivery our vegetables and to the, to the uh, wholesalers and then they, they give to neighbor islands anyway. Um, so this is our main main income source. So we we got a chance, uh, and then we work on uh, leasing the lands with Campbell Estate, and then we moved to Kahuku. So up to now, we are still farmers. You know, my father in law is ninety two years old, and and he just uh, being forced to retire because he been working all the way until like. Three years ago, he fell down in the farm, and so he has to stop now. And what I want to say is, as our you know long-term farmers, and we work so hard, and we work like uh, only five days uh, a year. Uh, that I mean, uh, our our day off is like only New Year, Christmas, and or the uh, thunderstorm, bad weather's time. Otherwise, we've been working every day. Um, to raise our kids and then provide good families. And I think uh, uh, farmers, okay, is tough life, okay, as a farming. And so if the government or the city and county, they have this IAL and then force us that eventually afterward, we were worried about our lease land gonna be taken away from the landlord. So we 
finally, we bought the land about in 1996. What I want to say is the lands that we own since uh, from 1996. And what we get that time is we can only afford. So can I ask you land. this? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you to summarize your testimony? I, I okay. have no doubt there will be questions for you. And also, can you state your address for the record as well? Oh, okay. We, I believe in 1996, let me get it out here. Okay, uh, is uh, Kaluanui Agriculture Subdivision and the address was, because um, I think we have a new address, but or we didn't have yet. We don't have it yet. Five, uh, five three seven seven two Kamehameha Highway Haula. Thank you. Okay, and this is actually we got. What what we want to say is finally we actually straight this land's ownership uh, by about a couple of months ago because we we we've been fighting this. Not really fighting. We want to know why we cannot get it consent through city and county, but we've been paying the tax, the house lot tax and the farm, farm lot tax, and the state is cons consenting from the beginning by the city and county collecting our tax, you know, uh, property tax, but they don't consent. So we cannot really get a permit, you know, for building a farm house on the lot. And then now we finally, get the thing straight and after 40 years farming and this uh, IAL gonna stop us building building the farmhouse on the land if we become an IAL category? That is not fair. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very and much. And then we actually want our son to testimony because yeah. he's a local boy, AB. Uh, I mean, born in Hawaii and grow up here and then to New York, working there hard and then planning to come back. And we have a granddaughter, one year old now, and they plan so to Ms. have Sue, a second I'm, one. I'm, I'm going to need you to summar end your testimony so that we can ask you questions. Okay. You have anything what more I want to wanna... say is you guys stop our children's futures options, the lifestyles options, after their ancestors in Hawaii working so hard for farming and want to build their better life for our grandchildren and now and uh, you just you, you just have IAL coming up and then this is not a free freedom you know this is a like like punish to us we are working very hard thank you so much for your testimony I'm going to see now if people have questions for you okay questions, thank you questions for the witness starting with the city and county Ms. Apuna uh, thank you, Ms. Sue, for your for your testimony. So is the issue that uh, you understand the IAL designation to not allow you to uh, develop a farm dwelling, a house on your farm? Right. Okay. And, and is that it's going to affect our, our land's value? And, and were you somehow advised of this uh, by an attorney or other person? Oh, no, no. It's just that we, we were just thinking, because we never thinking that to, uh, like, like some, uh, like, I think city and county or government worry that we, we're going to develop uh, uh, or change our zoning. No, that area is not going to able to. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Sue. Maybe I, I just uh, didn't really get involved with uh, this and until my husband gave me the notification, the letter that you guys sent him to us. And then that's my husband and I, we were thinking, wow. And if, if you guys pass this, you know, designated like IAL, is that gonna restrict us to do what we wanna do on the land? Or we just wanna build, you know, cause it's an agriculture too. Uh, if we wanna build, one house or two houses on the land, are we able to? That's my question. Thank you. Um, OPSD, Ms. Kato. No questions, thank you. Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioners. Commissioner Chang. Thank you, Ms. Su. So um, mm -hmm. what gave you the idea that you couldn't build a farm dwelling on your house on your land if it's IAL. 
Uh, I guess, you know, um, our experiences, you know, as uh, immigrants and working so hard every day. And uh, we, we bought this land through, you know, I think there was a uh, lot uh, in 1996 through Mr. Ige or uh, the, what you call the USD, uh, you know, department, uh, federal department, uh, some, some, uh, some agents, you know. Uh, and later on, when we want to build a home, farmhouse, we don't allow to. Because the city and county don't consent, but they're collecting our house lot property tax and our farm lot property tax, uh, even up to now, over 1996 okay. till now. Yeah. And then, so just, that's why I think, okay. I that's, just, that's why, okay. you know, let me finish. That's okay. why we didn't get any help from lawyer, but attorneys, but we just assume that you guys, what, otherwise you want to, why you want to do IAL? Okay. Uh, you know, what is the really purpose for us, uh, you know, for restricted to farmers, they own farm lots or whoever, or even the, if you worry about the investors, even as investors, after 10 years or 15 years, they hold the land, they deserve to own some, you know, to, to make decision on their lot. Okay. Just like right now, you know, uh, the kids from mainland due to the pandemic and they're coming mm -hmm. back home. And because uh, they, they want to enjoy the airs, the mm -hmm. good airs, good water for their next generation, mm -hmm. they pay 300000 more than last year or two years ago to buy the single family home. Okay, Ms. Hugh, we, what, no, yeah. thank you okay. so much because we're getting a little off the subject and I know there are- I'm sorry. Others, but no, 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 no. I know you feel very strongly about this, but thank you very much. No other questions. Thank you. Are there any further questions for the witness? Um, I would just, and this is just for the witness, but I'm not asking a question. I'm just, just so it's really clear today, all we're doing today, Ms. Sue, is not making mm -hmm. any determination about your property or any other individual property. All we're deciding today is whether or not we believe the city has taken all the right steps so that we could then actually consider their specific recommendations going forward. If we say no, then um, it will go back to the city to start again. If we say we think there is, there will be a chance for you and any other individual property owner to say, no, we don't believe that our land should be designated. So this is only one part of the process. Um, and okay. there's no decision that will affect your property's property rights today. So. That's thank good. You. Thank you. Thank I you. Saw, I'm sorry. I'm kind of emotion, emotional about this because I Absolutely. feel uh, real estate is real estate. You know, properties, properties, yeah. whoever own what kind of properties that supposed to be protected for their future value. OK, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your testimony and for your work as a farmer in feeding Hawaii. It's 9.58 a.m. I'm going to move you to be an attendee again. Um, we're now a little past the time I wanted to take a break. We're going to come back. Well, it's now it's 9.59. We're going to come back at 10.09. At 10.09, I'm going to try and allow, um, figure out whether or not we can get Mr. Bloom's um, technical issues to testify, followed by Mr. Brian Miyamoto, Caridad Leiva, and Bobby Correa. Recess for 10 minutes till 10.09. Before we start, before we start the meeting of, um, okay, it's 10.09 a.m. We are back in session, um, continuing with oral testimony from the public um, on the city and county of Honolulu's important agricultural lands proposal. We will now accept testimony from Mr. Jeff Bloom, who is here by audio. Um, Mr. Bloom, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Um, if you would, um, state your ad name and address for the record and then proceed with your testimony. Yes, Jeff Bloom, address is 41-755 Kaulu Kanu Street, Waimanalo, Hawaii 96795. Thank you, so please proceed. Okay, uh, and I've submitted written testimony. I testified in May, submitted written testimony in May and obviously a number of us in Waimanalo I belong to the Waimanalo Agricultural Association, but I am not speaking on their behalf. I'm only speaking on my behalf, but I've spoken to a number of other uh, 
landowner farmers out here that also belong to WAA. So we, we all talk and we have monthly meetings. And this is really only came up in May when we got a letter, as everyone else, I think, mentioned or previously from uh, Durrett and Lang uh, and Morse notifying us. And then we got a letter afterwards from the city, but we never got anything before that. I went back through WAA because we had a meeting about it and someone brought up that there was meeting. Somebody from WAA went somewhere to DPP, would come up and speak to us and other Department of Ag, other organizations. I don't go to every meeting, obviously, like anybody can't take time to go do that monthly uh, when they have them. But I belong since the 80s. I've owned this property since the 80s. And I really believe that the process was flawed. We were never notified. Lots of things have been said. Uh, when I took my testimony, I just sent that back out to people in WAA so that they were aware and someone else posted the DPP letter that went to uh, the Land Use Commission and I read through that. And it's all well and good that the recommendation is minimal to no effect on property rights, that the recommendation means procedural due process, uh, the city property applied all eight standards. I disagree with everything that DPP is saying. That is not true whatsoever. I do not, you know, I was raised, I'm 71 years old. I was raised to trust, but verify. I do not trust the state. I do not trust the city because lots of things are said. And then everybody takes the laws and makes their own rules, recommendations of how they do them. So this administration is great. Next administration has a different approach. I don't trust any of that. I have a 22 year old grandson graduated UH. He's part Hawaiian. He basically, loves the land, he wants to own this property, maintain it, he's here daily, he works. Now he graduated in Hawaiian studies with dual major in Hawaiian studies in plants. He now works at the um, Bishop Estate, but this is where he wants to spend his life later on. So if, if, if I, I can think ask you're you not someone talking else. about the next generation, you're talking about people right now and only the big landowners have something to say. So bottom line, I'll cut it there. This has been flawed, we've never been notified. I went back through WAA, someone from DPE, DPP in 2017 came and said, oh, landowners are going to have the ability to opt out. That's what we, that's what was said. I was not there, but somebody brought that up when we had the meeting uh, in May and DPP, they brought it. I have a copy of that was, you know, sent back out as meeting minutes. DPP said, you have the ability to opt out. Don't worry about IAL. Well, I am worried about IAL and nobody ever gave me the ability to opt out. So you tell me what's right. Was 2017 DPP recommendation right? Or is 2022 DPP recommendation right? Or what's going to happen in 2027 or 2030 when my grandson's 30 years old? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for this testimony and your other testimony that you've given to date on this matter, as well as your persistence this morning with the technological challenges. Let me see if there's questions for you. City and County. No questions. OPSD. No questions. Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioners. Any questions for Mr. Bloom? We've heard from you before about your operations and it's good to hear of your um, children's intent to work this land. Um, we hear your testimony loud and clear. Thank you so much, Mr. Bloom. All right, mahalo. Mahalo. I'm going to move you to be an attendee. Um, we will now um, move on with Brian Miyamoto, followed by Caridad Leiva, Bobby Correa. Um, Caridad, Brian Miyamoto, Caridad Leiva, and Bobby Correa. So. Mr. Miyamoto, if you're able to enable your audio and video. Aloha, how's it? Aloha, Chair, members of the Land Use Commission. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. Thank you. Please um, address and proceed. Okay, uh, before I start, Chair, just uh, want to inform you that I am not a farmer or a property owner. I am the Executive Director of the Hawaii Farm Bureau, representing uh, nearly eight. 1,800 members statewide on Oahu in the city and county of Honolulu, nearly 700 members. Is it okay for me to continue to give? Oral Absolutely. Testimony? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, so uh, Hawaii Farm Bureau, Brian Miyamoto, address 92-1770, Kunia, Hawaii, 96759. Um, the Farm Bureau, along with Blur, were two uh, main proponents of the IL law back in 2005. And the purpose was to promote and preserve ag lands based on ag viability, not as a land use tool. Also, Chair, I did submit on behalf of the Farm Bureau testimony on the May 26th meeting, and we stand by the written testimony. So I will try to summarize that testimony again. Okay. Again, uh, ag viability, not land use. To assure the viability of IL lands, eight criteria were to be weighed against each other and state and county incentives were required so that farmers and ag landowners could decide which parcels to voluntarily designate as IL. And in fact, the last time I was before this body was testifying in support of a landowner that wanted to designate their land into IL. And we believe that under IL law, counties are required to implement IL ag incentives prior to his recommendations to designate IL lands. Uh, we do not believe the city has done that yet, which resulted in farmers and landowners or, or denying them the opportunity to consider both state, which we do have state incentives and county incentives in order to make a decision to voluntarily designate their lands. And, and this was actually um, articulated by a previous testifier. Okay. Farm owners and long-time farm families could be impacted by specific requirements and restrictions of cities IL designation. However, they may not be aware that their parcels are being considered for IL designation, may not understand the impacts of these LUC proceedings and may have not received notice to these proceedings or unable to attend because they're busy farming their lands. Farmers and ranchers are out farming and, and a lot of them probably want to be here, but they need to farm and they're recovering from the terrible weather that we've just had. So I think you've heard that from previous testifiers. Um, that's not to say these haven't been sent out. We went through the entire timeline. We saw on your website what has been done, but again, they may not have seen it, may not know how to approach these meetings. The, we believe that the city's use of just one IL criteria to make its recommendations is contrary to the purpose and intent of the IL law. Uh, we believe that some of the city's recommendations may include parcels that do lack water, lack good soil, and may not have been farmed before or recently. All factors that weigh together would make farming not viable. Again, IEL is an ag viability law. If I can yeah. ask you to summarize. Absolutely. Just have a couple more. Um, it's been brought up, so I'll say it real quick. Ag landowners are concerned about the occupancy, occupancy limits on farm dwellings, especially those who plan to retire on their farm, as the law may restrict occupation to those who are, or restricts occupation to those who are actively farming. And again, this is my written testimony, so I won't go through that. I will just summarize by saying, we respectfully request that the LUC return the city's recommendation back to the city with a request to have the city implement ag incentives for farmers and landowners as required by IL law. Also allow the farmers and ag owners, landowners the three years after the implementation of those incentives to voluntarily designate their lands prior to submitting IL recommendations to the LUC. Contact and work with ag landowners to gather the facts to determine whether their parcels meet the criteria and can be agriculturally viable and whether the dwelling arrangements and the ag use of the property are consistent with the law. And then analyze each parcel recommended based on weighing of the IL criteria. And you do have our commitment, Chair and members, that the Farm Bureau will assist. We understand there's uh, members and farmers and landowners that are very concerned about IL. We are supporters of IL, and we will do what we can to assist in the IL process with the city. We do commit to the city and County of Honolulu. Uh, that is uh, all we have. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Mahalo for your testimony. Let me see if there's questions. Sydney County, Ms. Apuna. Uh, no questions. Ms. Kato, OPSD. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto, DOA. No questions. Commissioners, starting with Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Wong, we cannot hear you. You're not on mute, but your it must be your microphone is not connected. How's that? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Okay, let me get off my headset then. 
Um, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Brian, I got a question for you. When the, um, when the city first started the IAL, IAL process, they had a working group. And I think your organization was part of the original group to assist the city. Is that correct? I believe there were Farm Bureau members that were part of that. That I believe, I, I know as a fact, yes. Yeah, you're correct, Commissioner. Okay, so the question I have is that during that process, did the city, if, if you know, or if you don't just say, I don't know, um, did they ever say, this is our game plan or this is our, how we're gonna do the whole thing? Did they ever say that? I don't know, uh, Commissioner. I wasn't part of the, um, that working group or the TAC, um, uh, but I did participate and, and I do applaud the city and try. We did convene meetings to try to come up with incentives, county incentives. So, um, you know, appreciate the work that the city has done. Um, but just again, um, we are concerned with the process at this point, but I, I don't know to answer your, your original question. Thank you, sir. Um, the next thing I have is, you know, you talked about incentives and that they started a process, but that sounds like they never executed on, you know, to say, we're going to do this now. We're going to say, hey, farmers, you can hit this incentives if you designate IAL. So they never did that last step, did they? Yes, I don't think any formal uh, IAL specific incentives um, were developed. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have another question for you, and this is just regarding if we, we return it back to the city, do you have any recommendations in terms of either size that they should look at or, you know, because it assume, I assume they looked at the criteria, but they only use one. So what is, do you have any recommendations? I, I do understand some of the discussion has been on, on parcel size. Um, we currently don't have any recommendations and that's why we do recommend working with the farmers and organizations such as ours um, to come up with, uh, I, I think, uh, viable suggestions. Um, you know, IL again was wasn't just a large tract, but was retaining large contiguous tracts of agriculture for ag viability. Um, the impact to the small farmers, uh, we don't want them to be negatively impact. So I think that's where the concern is coming. Um, you know, we did hear anywhere from two to possibly four acres. Uh, again, but I, I'm not in a position right now to give you a definite number as far as a parcel size, uh, Commissioner Wong. Okay, um, that's all. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Chang. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miyamoto. I find your testimony to be extremely compelling because you actually represent farmers that are out there doing the farming. Um, And your recommendation is to essentially remand it back to the city to have them redo the process and that the Farm Bureau would assist the city in that process, um, but that before they go back out, they would um, comply and adopt these incentives. Is that what, is that what you're recommending? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Chang. Yes. Um, We'd like you to go back to the city and we will work with the city again to reach out to the farmers to dialogue engage the farmers. Um, but we do want to see incentives again. Uh, one of the previous testifiers today talked about wanting to voluntarily designate and that's what we prefer to see the voluntary designation. Uh, and incentives will help with that again incentives to help with the egg viability. Well, uh, we don't want this just to. to IL to have land in, uh, in agricultural land. We want it to have land in productive agricultural land. And that's where the incentive component comes in. So the original bill passed in 2005, there was a subsequent 2008 incentive requirement uh, that, that we, we knew that we needed to get these lands into IAL. So we'd like to see county incentives, not just sitting in County Honolulu, but all the counties again, to help the viability of our ag producers. Because I too, I mean, that, that has been a, a, an issue that has troubled me is the large, you know, some, many of the large landowners that came before us, one of the major incentives is if they voluntarily do it, 
the rest of their land won't be won't be subject to IAL. But these small farmers don't have those options. And if we're really looking at sustainability, and we had a great presentation by OSPD yesterday about ag sustainability, but it does depend upon these incentives and these infrastructures. Um, I'm not sure if you had an opportunity to review the city, the city submitted a supplemental brief, but in their, in their, in their pleading or their response, they said, um, if we remanded it back, the city lacks the resources and staff to redo the IAL process. And I guess that, that has been a real concern. I mean, given just the economic conditions and the city has got a lot of stuff on its plate right now, far beyond IAL and it took them, I guess, you know, almost 10 years to do this process and I'm sure it cost them money. Um, do you fear that if it is remanded back that the city won't proceed to redo the IAL designation? That's always a possibility, Commissioner. And, and in the past, the Hawaii, Hawaii Farm Bureau supported, and in fact, I believe we've even introduced legislation to provide the counties with funding for IL mapping for the process. We understand that it does take resources. Um, so, I mean, that's again something that we can look at. We know that, uh, that money is tight all over within our state and our county governments. Um, but, you know, we are supporters of IL. Um, we, we want to see land preserved for active, productive agriculture and farming, uh, but we do understand the limitations also. We are practical. Um, did this, did, were you part, was the Farm Bureau, um, did, are you aware of whether the city did reach out to the Farm Bureau to help, you know, um, in communicating with the farmers? Has there been coordination between the city and the Farm Bureau over the last several years regarding IAL? I'm not aware of many, if any. A um, lot of the information we've gotten has been from our landowners. I believe they, they are, they have been sent and again, went through the timeline and we did see things that are here from our landowners and our farmers, um, specifically on specific issues of assistance, I, I don't recall. Um, I don't want to say with certainty, no, but I, as executive director, I don't recall. And that's why I made the statement, Commissioner, that we will assist the city if uh, they so desire um, with the continuation with the IEL process. And we've been a little bit more active. We do have three Oahu County chapters. So we actually rely on Oahu County chapters. Uh, we have 11 across the state, but three are here on Oahu uh, to basically uh, advocate for the Wahoo farmers with issues uh, that deal with Sydney County Honolulu, but the state has now gotten involved, the State Farm Bureau, we commit to supporting this process. I would suspect that the farmers, they are probably more inclined to trust the Farm Bureau than they are to trust the government agency, so that farmers would cooperate. I mean, if you, if the Farm Bureau reached out to the farmers um, are you confident that, and you know, you could better explain to them the process, the content? Um, are you confident that the Farm Bureau could effectively do that with your membership? I, I think um, the Farm Bureau would work with other partners, such as the Waimanalo Ag Association, mm -hmm. um, who a member spoke before, who, who do have uh, regularly scheduled meetings and do have the network and outreach along with the state department of agriculture in the city i think collectively uh it's much better um you you have more voices and more opportunities mm -hmm. to reach more of those that are going to be impacted by uh, IAL here in the city and county of honolulu um so that would be our approach um yes uh we do have our membership so we do communicate with them i, I believe we uh we are trustworthy with our members and with with mm -hmm farmers that aren't members, they do know who the Farm Bureau or, or who we are. So I think um, that would just improve the ability to communicate and to reach out with many of the, the farmers who, as we said, are busy farming. They're busy ranching a lot of times and may not understand and may not think they impact or as you heard a previous testifier believe 
that they heard from the city and county that they're not going to be impacted by IEL and they'll be able to opt out, but even understanding what that process is, um, they may not. So we can assist with that and we are committed to assist with our farmers and ranchers here on Oahu uh, through this IEL process. And that's very encouraging because um, I think there's a lot of misinformation. And if you receive something in the mail from the city, that's probably, um, I'm not too sure what, how effective that is versus being able to talk to someone at the Farm Bureau. I really appreciate your testimony this morning, Mr. Miyamoto, as that has really helped me to get a much better, hmm, to be much more optimistic uh, about sort of this collaborative path forward with the Farm Bureau, um, you know, assisting um, the city. So um, again, I greatly appreciate your testimony and on behalf of the Farm Bureau, your willingness to work with the city on IAL. So I have no other questions, but thank you very much, Mr. Miyamoto. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Miyamoto. I just got some pretty specific question. Uh, you've used the phrase small farmer and large farmer. Can you explain to me from the Farm Bureau's perspective, what is a small farmer? How big is it? Thank you, Commissioner. Um, we don't necessarily have a specific definition. I know, uh, you know, bona fide farmer has always come up as, as a challenge on how to define, is it by parcel size? Is it by income? Um, a lot of times we will use income and parcel size together. Majority of Hawaii farmers believe are small farmers. In fact, you know, we really don't have, if you look at nationally, any true large farmers other than a few. Uh, here on Oahu, uh, maybe a Larry Jeffs could be considered a, a large farm, um, a loon farms. Um, so we do use it quite a bit. Uh, majority of our farmers are small farmers. I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, Commissioner. So um, large farms are maybe those uh, from more of an income along with acreage, um, you know, uh, certain income threshold. Yeah, you you pretty much explained my dilemma because I can't figure it out on my own. Um, but for example, is there any criteria that the Farm Bureau has to distinguish small versus large? Is a hundred acre farm a small farm or a large farm? I mean, what insight can you provide to somebody that is not well versed in this uh, area? I, I think from a from an IEL standpoint, a land use standpoint, yes, so they, they would be considered a, a, a large farm from an acreage standpoint, um, because you could have a smaller operation that has higher um, that, um, crops that, that produce higher profits per acre. So it would more be an acre. We, again, within our policies, we do not break down. We, we tend to use, um, uh, say, USDA statistics, and we could share what, what we would believe would be smaller, large farm as far as designations. Um, you know, like, Five acres, we would consider a small farm, but 50 acres, 100 acres, medium to large farms, several hundred acres at that point, large farms already in Thank Hawaii, you. for Hawaii standards. Yeah, I appreciate your perspective. Thank you very much. No, nothing further, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. Commissioner Ohigashi. Um, I was looking. I was looking at the petition that the city had filed and according to it, it had exhibit, according to exhibit B, which was a petition, they have the technical advisory committee. And one of the interest groups that were on the technical advisory committee was, was HFBF. Is that the Hawaii Farm Bureau? Thank you for the question, Commissioner Igashi. Yes, it is. And, and as I stated, I know that we do have, we did have Farm Bureau members that were part of that. Um, that from, I personally was not part of that. that I, I understand that you're in the but were the concerns that the Farm Bureau have now addressed or brought up in the Technical Advisory Committee by the Farm Bureau? From my understanding, talking to a few of those that did serve on the committee, yes. I believe those <laughs> concerns. I think one of the concerns was um, 
utilizing one criteria. And was was there a report issued by the TAC saying that these are the criteria we should use separately from uh, the city's determination to use a certain criteria? Or was that an agree agreed upon criteria used by the TAC? I'm sorry, Commissioner, I, I can't answer that. I, I do, I'm not aware of a dissenting view. Okay. Um, I, I will I will speak to some of the, the members again to see if there was, but I don't believe there was. The only reason why I'm asking this is, is, is that the Hawaii Farm Bureau was included in this determination. And they were supposed to have represented all the same farmers that you presently rep represent or claim to represent now. And being a part of this group, Hawaii Farm Bureau, I believe, should take some ownership of what the recommendations were was in that matter. And recognize that if we don't do it now, it probably won't be done by the city. If it's not done by the city, is the Hawaii Farm Bureau going to try and implement or try and obtain a methodology or change legislation trying to get these IL designated, these IL lands designated? Because from what I understand is we could follow your recommendation, it is dead. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I don't feel that it, it's dead. I, again, we did state, I, and I'll continue to state, we do support IEL. We were one of the proponents earlier. We, we just believe that with the concern of the farmers, and, and we understand this is just a process meeting, uh, so we do take ownership. I, I'll, I'll, I'll sit and say yes, I, members on the TAC or Farm Bureau members. So, and I do know that they voiced concern. Uh, that being said, we are where we are today. So we are addressing the issue at hand today on behalf of, of some of our farmers and our landowner farmers about the process and their concerns. So we're before the commission here on behalf of our members. And we are also committed knowing that we have a huge role in IAL, huge role in the TAC, that we want to do what we can to move the IL process forward and not stymie it and not stop it. That's not what we're here for. We, we want to see IL. We are supporters of IL, but we also listen to our members on their concerns and we want to be able to address those concerns and to assist our farmers to allow them to continue to do what they're doing. I, I'm just reacting to the, the city's Supplemental brief, and I'm taking them at, taking that as their official position, uh, being that they're the city, and so those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ohigashi. Commissioner Cabral, followed by Commissioner Axon. Okay, thank you, um, Chair and Commissioners. I was in transit, but I never missed a word. I love it. Technology. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Miyamoto, for uh, coming forward and, and volunteering, or not volunteering, I hope, hope you get paid for this job, but um, for uh, recognizing that there are some issues that need to be taken care of and, and being willing to get involved with it. Um, going a little deeper into this whole um, IAL language and that, looking at the actual statute as it's been passed, do you think that there's enough clarity in that language for you and the Farm Bureau and, and the farmers and everyone to be able to rely on what the legislature actually passed um, that gives you enough clarity that we can all go to move forward and we won't constantly be going back to some of the re references that have been, even the um, public has testified as to the contradictory interpretations of, of the law. Uh, are do, so do you think there's enough clarity or do you think we should maybe send it back 
to the law lawmakers for them to, um, I, I think the spirit of the law is great, but I, everybody seems to agree with that. But I think that you know, I'm wondering if the, the language needs um, better, uh, more appropriate or more um, proper details. What is your feeling on that? Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Um, thank you for the question. Difficult question. Um, yes, I believe the spirit is there, but you know, hearing Mr. Ohigashi's concerns also, taking it back to the legislature, we don't know if that will delay the process or possibly stop the process, which we, we'd hate to see. But based on testimony, including ours, there is some uncertainty within the, the language. Um, I don't think that was in, the intent to have the uncertainty. I, I think when the legislature passed the, the, the law in 2005 and 2008, I think uh, they try to make it as clear as possible, but it appears at this point, there is uh, some at least interpretation um, uh, dispute based on that language or a little uncertainty and needing a little bit more clarity. So that might be an approach that needs to be considered. I hate to use might and may and all that, but um, something that quite honestly, the Farm Bureau hasn't discussed at this point, whether or not um, the statute needs to be revisited. Um, you know, this is kind of the first county that's 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 kind of gone. And again, we applaud the city and county for for their work that they've done um, to come up with the mapping. Um, it's something that you know the law, the incentive law passed in two thousand and eight, two thousand five original law that that was almost thirty years in the making. So uh, that might be something to consider. Okay, thank you very much um, for. Your, your explanation and your information. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cabral. Commissioner Axon. Thank you, Chair. Just a quick follow-up on Commissioner Ohigasi's question. Uh, were the members of the Farm Bureau attending the PAC authorized to speak with our organization? And secondly, are they small farmer, farmers or large farmers? Could, could you repeat the question, uh, Commissioner Axon? Yeah, just a follow-up question from Commissioner Ohigas's question. The members that attended the PAC, are they authorized to speak for the Farm Bureau? Second is, are they large farmers or small farmers? Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so there was a, a, a kind of a mix. You have, um, as I said, we have uh, nearly 700 members here on Oahu. So you had members on the commission that were there probably representing themselves or their small farm operations. But I, I, if I recall, uh, our president at that time, Dino Kimoto, or former president, uh, is a small farmer. Alan Takimoto is not a farmer. He was the executive director at that time. Um, I believe uh, um, they were there on behalf and we were able not I believe I know that they were able to speak or at least Alan Takimoto on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Axon. Um, Mr. Miyamoto, clearly the commission has been very interested in, in and appreciative of her testimony, um, as have I. And I'm going to I'm going to make a statement and ask you to react to it. And if you think you've already responded to it in the questions of the other commissioners, please say so. But to me, a lot of what we are dealing with, particularly the emotional aspects of this, where frankly, I think that, and I'm not I'm not going to cast blame on anybody, but I think IAL has turned into a bad word among farmers and landowners on Oahu, at least right now. And redeeming it, as you say, the Farm Bureau believes in might take a bit of work because of what has happened to the date. And the core of that for me has to do with the language on the differing potential use of lands designated to the IAL for residential purposes if IAL versus non-IAL ag lands. My, where I'm at so far is that when you have really brilliant people like Ms. Apuna from the city opining one thing, but then the consultants to the city prior to things opining 
other things and other people saying, yeah, it does restrict it. No, it doesn't restrict it. The language is bad. It needs clarification. So really what I'm wondering is if we send it back to the city without asking for the legislature to further clarify things, don't you think we end up in the exact same place? Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the, the, the comments, um, quite possibly. Um, and I, I think you articulate very well what's going on. Uh, the, the uncertainty, there is a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, the Farm Bureau has been spending uh, some time on IL and, and submitting information to our members, working with WA also um, to clarify things that maybe are misunderstood, but also discuss that things that need some clarity also that we cannot clarify that we we cannot clear um, based on what we understand the law to be so uh, again I can't say right now that's what we will do or we will propose a uh, session will be starting in two weeks it is a, it is a possibility I think our first testifier Ms. Malofichi talked about quite possibly introducing um, legislation uh, but I think it is something that we need to consider and we'll take that to to our organization and, and discuss it and see if there is enough time to get the clarity so that we're not in the same place. And the other counties uh, don't have the same uh, challenges um, through their IO process also. That's not what we want to see. Uh, we want to see land preserved for ag viability, important agricultural lands, because we do want to see production and more productive ag and grow this industry. And we believe IO is one of the, the opportunities um, to assist our farmers through some incentives, through infrastructure. Uh, so we, again, have committed and will continue to commit to, to work with the city and county of Honolulu, all the counties, uh, all the stakeholders, Department of Agriculture, and our farmers uh, to hopefully make IL, as you said, not negative anymore and, and be the positive that we believe it is. Thank you very much for those comments. I'll just add, um, though it's not really related specifically to this docket um, before us. It's not, the, this is not the only issue I have with IAL. We've learned over the course of a special permit hearing on Maui that it is technically under the law possible to put a solid waste dump on IAL lands under the special permit provisions. We have designated as a commission, I voted against it, um, designating cliff sides as part of an IAL position. We've granted landowner petitions where all their C and D and B lands got protected and all their A lands were not. So um, I think a visit at the legislature of this critical statute could address more than just that housing issue um, if we really want to succeed in what we're trying to do. Are there any further questions for Mr. Miyamoto? Seeing none, thank you so much again. Um, obviously your testimony was of great value to this commission. We really appreciate it, as well as your written testimony before. Mahalo Nui. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay, it is 10.48 a.m. Um, I have, um, well, I, there are four hands raised in the attendee room, just for folks' information. We have 110 attendees. Four people have raised their hands. Um, there are two hands from Bobby Correa, there's two Bobby Correa's registered. I'm just going to assume for the sake of um, erring on the side of caution that these are two different people, both named Bobby Correa. I'm going to admit the first one. And then Caridad Leva has their hand raised. Um, Ms. Sue has her hand raised again, but I'm not going to allow additional testimony from individuals um, in order to ensure that we can have our proceedings move efficiently. So Bobby Correa, if you could enable your audio and video, you've been promoted to be a panelist. When you get promoted to be a panelist, you have access to enable your audio and video. Um, trying again. Bobby Correa, if you can enable your audio and video. Um, I'm going to admit the other Bobby Correa, who could be the same Bobby Correa. Um, 
Uh, could Bobby Correa please enable your audio and video if you wish to testify before this commission? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. So, all right. Sorry. Have you registered twice? Is that? Um, yeah, because the other one was on my regular. Uh, gotcha. Okay. I'm going to move that one off. And now I can hear and see. So, welcome. Okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Yes. Okay. So, um, if you'd state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, Bobby Correa. And I have, I have two properties. One, uh, the first one is 87-110 uh, Kulaupuni out in Wainai. And then the other one is uh, right next door and it's 87-110 uh, Kulaupuni. Awesome. Please continue, Mr. Correa. Yeah, my, my, my question, I, I wrote a letter um, back in May of last year to uh, the chief uh, clerk, Riley Hakoda. Hakoda. Yeah, and um, never got a response back. But my 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 main question is, the properties that I bought, um, they're not farmable. Yeah, the first one was was a used to be a, a junkyard, and I've been digging up tires. I've digged up over three hundred tires. I don't know how many cars, parts, and everything else before I bought the property. Yeah, that somebody else had buried, and um, we've planted like trees here and there you know, a couple of avocado trees or whatever. And in some places they just die. So the, the property is just not farmable. So, you know, designating, sorry, my laptop and fall on. No worries. So, so designating the, um, my property as, as IAL to me is kind of pointless. And I have, uh, I have rentals on the property and that's really why I bought the property for. And uh, the one next door, on uh, 87-110, almost the same situation. It's mostly all coral and, and uh, houses. I have multiple dwellings over there. So it's to me, it's not really feasible. I'm not a farmer. I'm never going to farm it. My kids are not farmers. They're never going to farm it. And I kind of feel like uh, you guys did a uh, blanket uh, designation of this. So just took random any property that was uh, zone ag is is put into this category. And I think it's almost pointless you guys putting this in. I, I'd like for mine to be opted out. I, I don't understand why it's in. I asked if I could opt out. Um, I think I spoke to uh, Donna Puna before and she says, yeah, we'll be able to opt out. Uh, never. Uh, she, uh, and then I sent the letter and never got a response. So I, I don't really understand. I, I know you guys are making decisions now, but I just want to voice my opinion. Yeah. My, my lands are not there's no way unless unless I dig up all the dirt, take them out, and some of the tires I dug down, they're like ten feet deep. So, whoever had the property before me, like I said, that most of the land is probably contaminated. I'm assuming because trees die, like I said, some of them grow, some don't. I think it's here and there. I'm never gonna farm it. My kids are never gonna farm it. They're gonna inherit it after me. And um, I, I, I just would like to opt out. I, I don't like this. I feel like it's it's forced by the government and by everybody else that I that I. You know, I cannot, or my heirs cannot do anything that they want to do with the property. I'm not saying that we're going to develop it and all of that. I have rentals, and that's, I think okay. it's important also to do, to, to provide housing, yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Correa, for your testimony. Let me see if there's questions or comments um, in response to your testimony. Ms. Apuna. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Kato, OPSD. Questions? Mr. Yamamoto, Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioners, questions for Mr. Correa. Mr. Correa, can, can, you, can you, just so it's clear on the record, can you state again the question that you posed um, in a letter to the LUC? Well, in, in the letter, I explained why my property is not farmable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a complete waste. I think it's forced upon me. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, my question really is, can I opt out? Yes. Okay. So um, the, the, the short answer is if we decide today that we believe the city complied with the IAL statute correctly, and we decide to go forward with their recommendations, then there will be a process by which any individual landowner can say, contest their inclusion of their lands. So there will be that possibility, but we might not even get there 
the commission could say at the end of the day, for various reasons, which I think you maybe have heard in the discussion, we don't believe that it's right to move forward with the city and county's recommendations, in which case there's nothing happening to your property at all at this time. Does that respond to your question? Yeah, yeah, pretty much now. Um, am I going to be notified of this? Because it took it took over. You guys were doing this for a few years before I even got notified. So I just want to so make sure I, that I, I am cannot, going to be I cannot speak to the process used by the city and their consultants and others and a private law firm that they've used. Um, the Land Use Commission has, going off of the records that we're able to obtain, done our best to send out notices to every registered owner of record. And we would continue that process if we moved forward. Okay. Yeah. Because within the last uh, almost one year, I guess the last maybe eight months, I, I have been I have been receiving the letters for you guys from you guys. Yeah, I believe we um, the letter that the Land Use Commission initially sent out when we started this process and the letter from the direct firm um, came right around the same time, which might have also caused confusion to people as to who exactly was um, contacting them. So Mahalo for your okay. testimony and for your um, your written testimony and your efforts to understand and participate in this process, Mr. Korea. We very much appreciate it. Okay. Mahalo. Okay. Mahalo Nui. I'm going to move Mr. Korea back to being attendee. Um, we have now signed up um, Karidad Leiva, Phil Rogers, and Raquel Achu. Um, it is 10.56 if we can get through them um, by... Um, 1110, um, it would be good to be able to conclude oral testimony in this matter and move on. So I'm going to admit Karidad Leiva. If you can enable your audio and video, please. Hello. Aloha. Um, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Yes. Okay. So if you'd state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, my name is Caridad Leva. My address is 8-7-1029 Ili Ili Road, Hawaii 96792. Mahalo. Please proceed. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick view of the pond that we have here are two acres of water from this uh, recent flooding that we've had here at our, on our property. So we got two acres of swamp land now. Um, we had to uh, purchase a $5,000 pump in order to, sorry, keep my mom's house from flooding. Um, this land, we would love to be able to grow things and plant on it. Uh, but the condition it is in now is not possible. And I know this is not you guys deciding, um, you know, whether or not to go through, but as far as us being notified, I, I bought this property in um, 2017. And when I purchased it, I was absolutely not notified by the seller or by city and county of any potential IAL designation. And to me, it kind of just um, is scaring people off to want to, you know, sell their property to maybe investors who right now are buying up everything and um, not using the land to develop. I mean, using the land to develop and not using it to farm because it's like you're putting more restrictions on us when we're struggling to make it as it is. And um, I just want to go on record and say that. You know, everybody's struggling. We're trying to work through it. And the city and county, I understand they're understaffed. I work for the State Department of Agriculture. We're understaffed, but we still have jobs to do. And you guys returning it, um, you know, and them saying that it'll probably never happen shouldn't be something, you know, that they don't have the staffing to do. It shouldn't be something that the landowners are punished because of their lack of staffing. You know, we get yeah. through our jobs every day. So I uh, appreciate it if you send it back to them to do better, do a better job. And I got 
um, friends and family in this neighborhood who has who still don't know nothing about what's going on. And I try and inform them. They don't have the technical skills to go on these meetings or, you know, know what to do with a letter that they yeah. received. And most of the letters they received is just recent from you folks, not from City and County. And that's all. Thank you very much. Mahalo, Ms. Leva. Let me see if there's questions for you. City and County. Uh, no Ms. questions. Apuna. No questions. Ms. Kato, OPSD. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto, the Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioner, starting with Commissioner Chang. Actually, Ms. Leiva, I have no questions other than to tell you thank you so much for your testimony. Um, I really appreciate you coming forward today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Giovanni. I'd like to echo uh, Commissioner Chang in thanking you, Ms. Leva, for coming forward and clearly expressing your frustrations and your feelings and your passions. Thank you for that. Thank you. In your testimony, uh, I think you said you went through a process by which you purchased the land recently. That was in, could you confirm what year? 2017, August, I believe. Okay. So in that process, can you elaborate just a little bit about what you think you should have been told or were not told or just the absence of information or? Yeah, so I did, not receive, I did not receive any notification from, um, what is that? I'm sorry, the title guarantee company that we pay or, or you know, that is supposed to research anything about the land didn't here, didn't get any information from the previous landowner um you know if they received any notifications i think we should have been notified by them that this is a potential ial designated land that i would be purchasing um but never heard anything until receiving the um paperwork from um you folks luc so it was the paperwork from luc that first note informed you of the potential for ial designation Yes, when I received it in the mail at the residence. That was the first time I ever heard of anything. So you never received anything from the city and county? No, nope. nothing from city and county. Thank you very much. Nothing Thank you. further there. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. Commissioner, is anything further? Um, Ms. Leva, I just echo the comments from my fellow commissioners. Mahalo Thank Mulia. you, and I, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Uh, understand. I just hope it works out. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Aloha. Um, I'm moving Ms. Leva to being an attendee. Okay, folks, it is 11.03 a.m. Um, I'm going to do this in order that we actually are able to um, try and make it through our business today. I'd like everybody who potentially wants to testify to raise your hand now. I want to get a count of who's going to possibly testify I'm going to list those out um, and then I'm going to stop there. We're going to go take a 10 minute break. We're then going to try and go through as many of those testifiers as we can. Um, I see quite a few hands going up. So um, I'm going to work with the commission staff to list those out. Um, and then I'm going to, um, I'm trying to balance here. On the one hand, I recognize that we want to be as full and open as possible to public testimony. We did, when we initially considered this, take um, and uh, I'll ask for a confirmation from our executive officer, at least one full day of only oral testimony on this matter previously. Mr. Ordenker, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So, um, so what I don't want to do, and the reason why I'm going to err on the side of cutting off testimony oral testimony is that we have received a huge amount of testimony. And if we spend all of our day te on testimony today, we will not be able to actually take up the substance of the matter before us and potentially further extend the unease and uncertainty that people are experiencing. So um, right now I'm gonna read off the names of people who I'm gonna be calling in order when we come back from break. Phil Rogers, Raquel Achu, Crystal, Sorry for my bad eyesight. Posi Ulai, Doreen Cooper, Susan Smith, Sandra Van, 
Francis Kamasova, Leon Lapina, and Harrison Gu. I will close testimony after Harrison Gu. I'm gonna make one last announcement. This is for the two people who are calling in. If you wish, if you're calling in by phone and you wish to testify, press star nine now to raise your hand virtually. Seeing none, those names that I called are gonna be the ones that I will call for testimony after our break, after which I will close public testimony on this matter. And then we will move on to the remainder of our proceedings comments from the city and county, questions for the city and county, comments um, from OPSD and DOA, and then deliberation by the commission. So um, we are um, going to, it's 11.05, we're going to break till 11.15, and then take up those names that I consider, that I listed, Mahalo. It's 11.16. We are back on the record. Um, I'm going to read again the list of people who, who um, raised their hands prior to my cutting off, adding people additional opportunity for additional testimony. Phil Rogers, Raquel Achu, Crystal Posiulai, Doreen Cooper, Susan Smith, Sandra Van, Francis Kama Silva, Leon Lapina, and Harrison Gu. Um, keep your hands raised if I said your name and you still intend to testify. Um, Phil Rogers, can you enable your audio and video? I have admitted you to be a panelist. Phil Rogers, there you are. I can see you. Now, if you could unmute yourself. There okay. you are, awesome. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth? I do. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, my name is Philip Rogers. My address is 68-346 Olohil Street, Wailua, Hawaii, 96791. Mahalo. Please proceed. Okay. I just wanted to uh, uh, reiterate that, yeah, my first notice of this potential designation was a letter from an attorney uh, dated April 12th, and subsequently I received the letter from LUC from you guys about this designation. I have never received anything from the city and county of Honolulu, um, nothing about the ability to refuse or to uh, apply for exclusion of this designation, uh, no information regarding to uh, uh, anything about this. So uh, I don't believe that they've met their duty in, in this situation. I also wanna take this moment to uh, clarify that I have test provided written testimony to LUC uh, on May 24th, 2021 via email. Once again, on June 11th, 2021 via mail. And then their most recent of January 5th, 2022. Um, I noticed you had mentioned previously that I had just been uh, that latest one. Um, I also have some concerns. I understand that many of the land, larger landowners were able to uh, designate some of their lands as a IAL while protecting other parts of their property or their parcels from this designation. To my knowledge, this was never provided to the smaller landowners such as myself and we are therefore uh, stuck with the burden of trying to fight this designation. Um, I believe that this should be uh, voluntary and that all the restrictions, benefits, um, tax implications uh, should be known prior to the designation of my property being designated AIL so that I can understand whether or not uh, what this really means to me, okay? If I can ask you to summarize your testimony, yeah. please. Excuse me? Could I ask you to summarize your testimony, please? Sure, sure. Uh, basically, I just think that the city and county has failed in every aspect of, of providing this, uh, providing information regarding this, uh, allowing uh, landowners to dispute their designation, uh, failure to just explain even what it is. 
and how it's going to benefit or restrict my property. I'm retired, uh, recently retired. I do have my land. Uh, I have a two acre lot and 1.885 I have dedicated to agriculture. Now, um, so I need you. To, I, I apologize. Okay, yeah. So I don't know. I don't understand. You know what the implications are of this designation. Okay. And Thank that's you. why I don't think it should be approved at this time. Thank you so much for your testimony. Let me see if there's questions for you. Questions for the witness, Ms. Apuna, City and County. No, no questions. Ms. Cotto, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto, Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioners, questions for the witness. So I want to assure the witness. Um, so I only listed the testimony orally that we've received since the last hearing because I've previously um, listed the testimony orally that we've received. I didn't want to repeat all 200 okay. names. Um, so we did receive your testimony earlier as well. Um, so um, rest assured of that. Um, okay. Thank you thank very you. much for your testimony today. We appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to move you back to being an attendee. I'm next going to admit, um, sorry, one second. So many things open on my computer. Um, Raquel Achu, followed by Crystal Posi Ulai. Ms. Achu, if you can enable your audio and video. Aloha. Can you Aloha. Thank yes. You. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just running in from the ranch. So I'm kind of a. Gotcha. Um, Let me call my. I got to swear you in first. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Yes. Thank you. So, name and address for the record, then testify. Yes. Raquel Achu. My address is 66952 Kueva Drive, and that's in Waialua, 96791. Mahalo. Please proceed. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I, I realize you guys have been at this for quite some time. Um, I apologize if I seem repetitive. I did chime in a little late. Um, the storm has given me extra jobs this morning. So um, I, I, I struggle with the IAL, basically. Um, going back to Mr. Correa, yes, I, would, I have tried to opt out many times, but it would help if um, in that process, uh, some type of confirmation is given to the landowner so they are comfortable and relying on um, their being able to opt out. Um, the reason I opt out is I feel the language is too broad. It doesn't offer a specific detail. And I mean that because farming as critical as it is, is not the only means of agriculture. Uh, we are ranchers and livestock is also very critical to the agricultural uh, industry. And I believe that there are so many different uses for the agricultural uh, land that I believe that this IAL can impact people in so many different ways, regardless of their land size, it will impact them in some way or another that may be different from myself. So I think it definitely needs to go back to the drawing board, to be quite honest. Um, there was a meeting several years ago in Haleiwa introducing this concept, never heard anything ever again until bless the Land Use Commission's heart, I started getting letters from you guys. And it really did sire uh, uh, alert, a big alert for us. And in support of Ms. Leva earlier, um, it is very true, you don't get notified of information that affects your land when you purchase it. For example, when we purchased ours, I had no idea what a dedication was until it expired and my property tax skyrocketed. If you can um, summarize, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm very concerned, obviously. I would like to have a more firm process, if that's possible, to opt out. I feel that it's just too broad and I think there needs to be a lot of homework and I absolutely support agricultural use and land a thousand percent. So thank you so, so much. Mahalo. Mahalo Nui for your testimony. Let me see if there's questions for you. City and County, Ms. Apuna. No question. Ms. Kato, OPSD. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto, DOA. No questions. 
commissioners, questions for Ms. Chu. Thank you for your clear and just well articulated testimony. We very Thank much you appreciate so much. it. Mahalo. Mahalo Nui. I'm going to move you back to being an attendee. Um, I'm next going to admit uh, Crystal, followed by Doreen Cooper. Aloha. Aloha. Hi. 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 Oh, um, we're getting some feedback there. Are you are you listening to this on a different device? No, it's just my mom is also a, a um she wants to talk also, so she's on her own iPad. Okay, if she can mute at least. Oh, um, yeah. That will. How about possibly now? eliminate that's better mahalo nui um so i'm going to swear you in and then you so your mother would like to also testify as well she's the next one in line oh oh god uh, doreen cooper yes gotcha okay uh do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth yes i do okay so um name and address for the record and then proceed okay my name is crystal Posiulai, uh 87630 kalkama road um, why not Hawaii? Mahalo. So I'm testifying on behalf of myself who lives here uh, with my mom. Uh, we farm, we farm pigs. So ours is not agriculture. And that's not, that's a question that they didn't, you know, that's one of the things that we don't know about. So um, for me, my testimony is you know, IEL has no clear anything, cannot answer any of our questions um, because they have no clear anything. We don't know what is a small farm, what is a big farm considering. We don't know um, as of farming, is it only agriculture? Is it only, is it not considered um, farming if it's of animals? You know, and then the emotional stress that's put on my parents this that is a that's a lot to do with it so you know they own this property 26 years they own it paid it off and and now you know they have this in their retirement they have this added stress you know and then um my mom's 71 years old she can't be farming the pigs outside she relies on us so it's basically we it'll evict my mom basically because that's what they're saying you know, everybody has to be actively farming. My mom can't actively, actively farm. So this is not, just not possible. So that's our whole, my whole dilemma, dilemma about this. Um, the structure, the, the part where it says, <clears throat> you know, you cannot live on, live on it unless you're actively farming. So that's our whole concern. And we do not support the ILO. IL designation. Tell them you opted out. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Gotcha. Mahalo Nui for your testimony. Let me see if there's questions for you. Um, City and County of Honolulu. I have no questions. Thank you. OPSD. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto, DOA. No questions. Commissioners. Questions from Ms. Posiolai. Um, so I just want to show you, we've heard your testimony clearly. Um, I, I want to highlight there is disagreement over what exactly the language means, right, over yeah. uh, around housing. And I think that's one of the things when we move into deliberation, we're going to discuss and really discuss whether or not the city and county can implement a law with such unclear interpretations. Yes. So. Um, we also you. heard your request to opt out. So mahalo nui for your testimony and for your persistence on this issue as well. We really, really appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to um, now move on to, I guess, your mother. Um, yep. So I'm going to move you to be an attendee and um, move Doreen Cooper in, followed by Sandra Van.
clear. I don't know. Okay. Hi. Aloha. Um, do you swear or from the testimony you're about to give us the truth? I do. I do. Okay. Oh, now if your daughter could mute her yeah. side so we don't get the feedback. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Hey, please proceed with your testimony, Ms. Cooper. Well, um, my name is Darren Cooper. I own a, a property, two and a half acres, uh, 87630 Calcoma Road. I recently just lost my husband in October. So it's only me and my kids. So my thing is, when we bought this property in 1996, our thing was to take care of my family, my children, my grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren, and so forth. And we were going to farm and raise pigs. And the reason for raising the pigs is we need food. We don't know where we can get our food in the next couple of years. The, the pigs will always, will always get food on our pig. And now these people come in and tell me what to do with my property when my property is I own the property. I paid off. The bank doesn't own them. I own them. Now, for them to come in and tell me what to do with my property, that's my constitution right that they're breaking, taking my stuff that I paid for and telling me what I got to do with my property. Mm -hmm. That's, that's that, I, that I don't agree with. And we even tried to opt out. They said we could opt out. No, they didn't even reply back to me. So my thing is, that's what it is for people to come over here, take our property away. That's communism already, taking people's property away when we already paid for it. And that's the reason I am testifying against, against it. That's Mahalo it, Nui. thank you. It couldn't be clearer what your position is. Mahalo Nui, let me see if there's questions for you. Oh, um, right. City and County. No questions. OPSD. No questions, thank you. Department of Agriculture. No questions. Commissioners, any comments or questions for Ms. Cooper? Commissioner Chang, followed by Commissioner Cabral. Ms. Cooper, I don't have a question. All I wanna say is thank you for your testimony, you and your daughter. Um, there's obviously a lot of misinformation, but I greatly appreciate all the work that you've done and um, the courage it took to provide us this testimony. So thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioner Cabral. Um, Don just said it, is that I thank you to everyone who's testified today. And it's really unfortunate because it, it's so stressful, like you said, and then also, it's so fearful and stressful and that you've had to take time, like run in from work and take all of this time to show up. I mean, we already know we we volunteered to show up. So we were sort of stuck here as commissioners, even though we don't get paid for this. But for you folks, this is not your normal day to come running in and attend a Zoom meeting and, and take care of all of those kind of paperwork. So we really recognize that this something is wrong in the in the process and the system, in my opinion. So again, thank you to yourself and to everybody. And um, I can't speak for everybody, but rest assured, we're hearing what you're saying. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Commissioners, any further comments or questions? I'm just going to acknowledge and thank you for lifting up um, your late husband with you in this testimony. Thank you very much for your testimony. I'm going to move you back to being an attendee. Um, I'm going to call on... Um, I, I no longer see Susan Smith. There's no hand raised. So going from the list before I, um, when I ask for all last names, the next name is Sandra Van, who is still here. I'm going to admit Sandra Van to be a panelist, followed by Francis Kama Silva. Nice to see you again, Ms. Van. Good morning and thank you. Good morning. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. Name and address. You know this drill now. Name and address for the record yes. and then proceed. Sandra Van, 86626 Pu'uhulu Road, Waianae, Hawaii. Please proceed. Um, I have testified before and I thank you for hearing me again. 
um, I am still opposed to this because I feel like it is sweeping in nature. Um, it does not take into account the, the fact that there are very different soil properties and capabilities, especially on small parcels of land like I have. Um, it will disproportionately impact elders and small multi-generational farms or properties. Um, I have 1.8 acres on my property is located in a river bottom, an old river bottom, very, very rocky, um, also prone to flooding when we have floods. It makes it very impractical to farm. You know, we are trying to grow some mangoes and coconuts and, and some of the tree and um, prop, um, products, but um, it's not feasible to think that this property can be commercially viable. Um, I hate to think that I have, have planned to leave this property to my children. My adult children live on the property with me. Um, if this goes through, they wouldn't be allowed to live here. And it looks like probably I wouldn't either um, now that I'm 65 and probably past the age of being able to go out and work the farms. So uh, hoping that this will be rethought. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Let me see if there's questions. City and County, Ms. Apuna. And no questions. OPSD, Ms. Cotto. No questions. Department of Agriculture, Mr. Yamamoto. No questions. Commissioner, starting with Commissioner Cabral. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to let know, I don't know if Sandy Van remembers me, but I remember your name and you had a newsletter about rodeos. And so I wanted to just let the board know that I have dealt with her. It's been many years. And then also the nest testifier, uh, Francis Silva, I have dealt with. Our children attended high school rodeo together now. 10 plus years ago. And so I've dealt with her quite a bit back in those days and even in some little real estate, but have not had um, you know, a lot to do with these folks. So just wanna let you know, I don't think just this will impact my ability to be objective and fair in my proceedings. Wanted to make sure that that's disclosed in case it came up. Thank you. Thank you for the disclosure, Commissioner Cabral. Commissioners, okay. any questions or comments for Ms. Van? Seeing none, thank you again for your clear and consistent testimony on this matter, Ms. Van. Mahalo. Very much appreciate it. Okay, um, I'm gonna move you to be an attendee. We have three um, final people, Francis Kama Silva, Leon Lapina, and Harrison Gu to be admitted in order. Francis Kama Silva will be admitted first. Francis Kama Silva, if you can enable your audio and video. There you go. Oh, I see you with your mo'o. Yes. Um, so you don't feel like you have to raise your hand if you don't have a good hold on the baby. But um, do you swear or affirm the testimony? You're about to give us the truth. Yes, I am. Okay. So please name an address for the record and then proceed. Francis Kama Silva. Um, I reside at 86412C, Luwalualae Homestead Road in Luwalualae Valley. We also own the parcel uh, adjacent to us, so two acres and 2.8 acres. I uh, just wanted to share that we were present at the 2017 Kapolei meeting, along with some of our neighbors, basically told that with our current ag zoning, there really wouldn't be anything with the IAL designation that would impact us. So we kind of didn't worry about it. And then we started getting letters from the attorneys and um, going into the statutes now, I see it's, it's a problem for us. I think that the, um, the 45.5 regarding the dwellings, it absolutely needs to be revisited and revised um, before anything further happens. I think that's a lot of the issues people have. Also in our Luwalualae Valley, the city just took their paintbrush and the entire valley they put under this designation with no other um, uh, review. And so other than the Hawaiian homes and the, um, the housing projects that are here in the valley, everyone is under this designation. And so to go from a criteria of eight down to three and then down to one, which everyone has water here, um, is problematic. So the way this has been done, I think it's um, has not been done the way that they were uh, told to do. Thank you. Mahalo well, Nui for your testimony. Um, let me see if there's questions. 
Ms. Apuna, Sedin County. Uh, no questions. Ms. Kato, the o OPSD. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto. No questions. Commissioners. Commissioner Chang. Um, Francis, this is, I don't have a question. Well, maybe I do have a question. And I'm sorry to be me, Ellie. Is that Protea in your background? Uh, it is, but it's from our, our property in uh, po uh, mm. Upper Polo on the Big Island, Hamakua. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I was just that. like, <laughs> I, I was so amazed. It's like, where do you go? I'm sorry to detract, so, but that's all. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, Commissioner Cabral. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Fran. Long time no see. Um, uh, the land that you're that is um, being referenced here that uh, in Waianae that I've been to your land. It's been like I said, 10, 15 years ago. But that is the land that that is being that has been designated. Are they trying to designate as your IAL land? Yes. Okay. No, thank you. I appreciate that because I, since I've been there now, I have a vision of that terrain in a sense. We're so well, much we don't have a yeah. vision of. And no, and, and we do uh, do cattle, we do livestock, uh -huh. we do cattle, but the cattle are not on the property. We use the property um, as holding pens, et cetera, uh -huh. for the cattle. We do use it for ag. Okay, no, 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 thank you, because it, it does. I thought, well, that looks pretty agriculture behind you there, but you no. Know. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Good to see you. Take care of that grandbaby. Okay, thank you. Moha. Um, commissioners, any further? comments or questions for the witness. Um, my admiration for your extremely effective multitasking. Um, <laughs> baby I didn't was... even disturb once. So but mostly mahalo nui for your testimony. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to move you to be an attendee. Um, we have Leon Lapina followed by Harrison Gu, and then we will conclude public testimony on this matter. Um, I'm moving Ms. L or, or moving Leon Lapina into the meeting to be a panelist. Please enable your audio and video. Oh, aloha. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Talking to you. So okay. Okay, Dad. Yeah. In the meeting now. Yeah. Hello. Aloha. Hello. Um, okay. I'm, going to, I'm going to swear you in and then ask you to introduce both of yourselves, give your address, and then your testimony, okay? Okay. So do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So name and address of both of you, if, if can. Okay. Oh, Leon. R. Lapina. I don't have no address. Okay. Uh, my address is uh, Post Office 2547. That's all I have. Uh, city? Yeah. Oh, that's the zip code. Nine six nine seven two. Mahalo. Um, and you're being you. assisted by your daughter, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So please share your testimony with us. Yes, I'm Josephine Lapina. And my my dad is correct. We don't have an we have an address, but we don't actually have an easement and haven't had it for years, over 10 years. Okay. Um uh, so we're with this um, with this happening is I you know my parents are um, they've had a pig farm and they've always Secret been with farm. agriculture um, they sell the uh, produce to buyers from uh, um, farmers markets chickens eggs and um, free, uh, fruit trees and part of the property is non arable. Um, we are adjacent to um, the West Oahu aggregate. And 
um, of which the you know the city and county department of planning took, um, you know, which was part of the easement, and um, um, so that is our driveway, which is all coral, and so um, what I want to know is, we f first of all we are going to opt out on that. They have worked hard to get this property. They have children, grandchildren, Great. and great grandchildren. And to take uh, to, to to make a use of this property, we would we want to know specifically what what is being used and is it really going to be used for agriculture here because it's it's all coral. And you know we've tried to get uh, uh, we have this meeting facility which you know the, the director George Atta. We had a meeting with up at DPP and he confirmed that we can have this. But yet, you know, we've been uh, getting notice of violations. My parents are retired and threatened that they're, they're telling the mortgage companies, we've got letters saying they've, they've told the mortgage company or their mortgage company that they're going to, you know, um, just, just being harassed. Now, um, as far as in the letter that's being generated, just, you know, um, it's not even being specific on the properties. And there's so many properties on this island and this island is an agricultural state. Why, and the, 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 the pie chart of, of agriculture, that is not us that made it to where now you have to have important, you know, make use of taking people's property to, because of the faults and you know the, the that the city and county have, have have done it's this is a this is a prosperous state why 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 are we not all you know being so prosperous here and why are they taking our property when they work so hard you know um so we are we um like the other person property owner has said we are opting out as we have a choice in the matter we have a choice in the matter because it is not our, it wasn't an us private citizens and we're, you know, you're, and, and, I, and I thank you for having this, um, you know, the commissioners, um, you know, to give us this opportunity because we've never given, we were never given, we had permits, we tried to apl uh, apply, have farmer's market here and raise the farmers here. And, you know, it's hard for us to, get our produce and go, we, you know, we wanted to have a farmer's market here. Can I, can I ask you to summarize your testimony? Yes. Please? Okay, well, we, um, we, we are opting out of this, as I, as I said, voluntarily, it, this is going to be, um, this is being taken arbitrarily and, and we want to know what, what specifically do they want to use this property for? Okay. And how much, and and to take away our lives and livelihood, and um, it's unconstitutional. Okay. Let me see if there's questions for both of you. Okay. Yeah. Um, questions for the witnesses, um, city and county, Ms. Apuna. Uh, no questions. Ms. Kato, OPSD. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto, DOA. No questions. Commissioners. Let, let me try to the degree I can to respond to the questions part of your testimony. So, so right, all, all we're trying to do today is so the city and county developed a list of proposed IL designations. We're not taking up the specifics of whether any particular parcel should be or should not be included today. All today we're looking at is over whether we believe we find their overall process complied with the law. If we say we believe they did, which we'll deliberate about afterwards, then you will get a formal opportunity to say, I object, I don't wanna be included in this. However, it is possible that we will also say, you know what, we do not believe the city did this process properly. We're sending the whole process back to the city, in which case there's no need to opt out because no properties will be moving forward at this time, they'll start the process again. Does that provide some clarity about where we are? 
I think so a little yeah. bit, but thank That's you. The one. And, okay. Okay. So um, thank you so much um, for your testimony and, and for assisting your father in being able to testify on this matter. We very much thank you. Um, it. One question, um, please. Um, are you? Will you be providing us information to as to how what we're going to do next? Like, so, will that be provided? Um, so it depends on what happens. If we send it back to the city, then it's up to the city on how they proceed and how they inform if they go forward. Um, if 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 it is us and we decide to proceed forward, we will continue to do as we have done throughout this process to go with the owner of record and send notices to everybody who has property that may be affected by this. Okay, thank you. Okay, mahalo nui for your testimony. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move you back to being an attendee. We have one final testimony from Harrison Boo, promoting to be a panelist. Aloha, my Kako. Hi, good morning. Um, do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth? Uh, I do, yes. Okay, so name and address for the record and then proceed. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Harrison Gu. Uh, my address is 217 Prospect Street, uh, apartment F1, Hawaii 96813. Okay. I am. Oh, thanks. I'm testifying today on actually on behalf of my client, Anasar Farms, LLC, and its affiliates. Um, I submitted written testimony in advance of this hearing on January 4, so I will not uh, be reiterating all of uh, the substance of that now. It, it is fairly lengthy, and you know I, I am the last uh, person to go, so I would like everyone to be able to get out of here in some, some uh, uh, expedited fashion. I'll try to be brief. Um, I have been listening to all of the testimony today, uh, primarily from lay people, the landowners that were affected by the IAL designation. Um, part of the reason that I, I even raised my hand was, you know, I think uh, there is a quite a large disconnect between the process that the county purportedly implemented and what people's understandings of what their rights and potential remedies were. Um, in the letter that my client got, um, my client was initially notified uh, of the IAL designation under the statute, uh, uh, HRS 205-47-D5. Um, one of the things that the county was required to do was to include some kind of position statement from the landowners. Uh, so my client had anticipated being able to provide some argument or opposition to the designation, which did not happen. And in the attorney general opinion letter that was issued on September 23rd, 2021, uh, the county's uh, compliance or failure with that particular section of the statute was not addressed. Uh, from what I'm hearing, almost no one received notice or if they did, uh, notice was only received once the LUC became involved. And I think that there is a, uh, a materially flawed issue because a lot of these people don't have attorneys, can't afford attorneys, they're just individual landowners. Sure, go, I'm gonna ask you to summarize, please. No problem. Um, the, ultimately, I think the process is very complicated and even the ultimate outcome of what the attorney general decided was that this proceeding has to be quasi-judicial versus rulemaking. I don't really know that anybody who didn't have legal experience would know what the distinction between those two was and what their rights and remedies were. So I think there are some pretty significant due process concerns here. And I would hope that uh, your committee and your commission takes that into consideration when evaluating the efficacy of what the county did in just unilaterally deciding some lands were IAL designated and some were not. Thank you for your testimony. Let me see if there's any questions for you. DPP, Ms. Apuna. Uh, no questions. Ms. Kato. No questions. Mr. Yamamoto. No questions. Commissioners. Seeing none, thank you for your written and your oral testimony this morning. We very much appreciate it. Okay, um, let me, I've moved Mr. Guru to be an attendee. Let me, 
sort of assess for us all the status of our proceedings. Um, I have closed public testimony on this matter because um, we need to move on to actually hearing from final arguments from the parties and deliberation. I'm going to suggest it's 11.55 after I'm done talking, we take a 35 minute break, go come back at 12.30 for lunch, after lunch. At 12.30, we will hear from Ms. Apuna from DPP any final arguments and we will get questions from the commissioners for her. I will then provide the opportunity for any final comments from OPSD and DOA. And then I will actually provide a further opportunity to Ms. Apuna to rebut anything that might've come up in the last two discussions with um, OPSD and DOA. After that, we'll move on to deliberation. Does that sound acceptable, Ms. Apuna? Yes, thank you. Ms. Cotto, oral, please. Yes. Mr. Yamamoto. Yes. Okay, commissioners, we're good. Meet back at 1230. Thank you so much to everybody who's been listening. We will reconvene at 1230. Commissioner Cabral, Axon, Ohigashi, Wong, Chen. Giovanni? Here I am. There you are. Riley, we're good to go. Uh, Mr. Ordenker, um, I know it's going to be pulling double duty with a Senate hearing. Um, We're all set, Chair. Okay. And County. Ms. Apuna. Yep. Good. Okay. OPSD. Mr. Yamamoto. Okay. It is 1231. We're going back on the record. Um, we will now hear final arguments from Donna Puna of the Department of Planning and Permitting of the City and County of Honolulu. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we can. There was just suddenly static somehow. It might have been your mic hitting fabric or something. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Please Thank proceed. You. Thank you, Chair. So I would first like to address some of the issues that were presented um, in written testimony. Uh, and this is with re regard to renewable energy. Some are fearful that the IL policy of HRS 20543, which quote, directs non-agricultural non -agricultural uses and activities from IL to other areas and ensures that uses on IL are actually agricultural uses will have a chilling effect on renewable energy projects. The city believes that this policy guideline does not preclude or prohibit non-agricultural uses on IL, but more accurately does not allow the supplanting or displacement of agricultural uses within not, with non-agricultural uses. We believe this policy guideline could allow beneficial non-agricultural uses such as renewable en energy projects on IL, so long as bona fide agricultural uses are included or incorporated on the same land in substantial proportion. For example, in September of last year, the commission approved a special permit for the Mothi solar project that includes agrovoltaics, which co-locates agricultural activities with the PV panels. As an island with limited land resources, the co-location of agriculture and renewable energy is reasonable, and the renewable energy industry should work with the agricultural industry to create authentic agriculture in coexistence with renewable energy. There could be good synergy between the two where renewable energy projects help to offset ag agricultural infrastructure costs. Next, uh, the, the establishment of incentives prior to county IL designation. Yes, it would have been ideal to have an abundance of incentives in place so landowners would be busting down the city's door to have their lands designated IL. But without more incentives established, the commission is not precluded from moving forward with designation of the city recommended IAL. And it would not be legally premature or procedurally improper 
for the commission to accept the city's recommend recommendation to designate IL at this time. While the enactment of incentives is required by the state and the counties, nothing in the statute requires their enactment pre precede the designation of IL. Uh, additionally, incentives were enacted, including the refundable qualified agricultural costs, tax credit, farm dwelling and employee housing of 205-455 and agricultural processing facilities permitting prioritiza prioritization under HRS 205-46.5. To stop this process, to await the development and passage of more incentives will further drag this already exhausting overspent process which this generation and perhaps the next will never see to completion. The city is currently looking at ways to support agriculture and to develop incentives to support farmers. Um, next is the city has provided, or there, some have said the city has provided conflicting information on the effects of IL. Uh, the DPP has done its best to interpret and communicate the IL statute and its effects on landowners. But if anything is conflict, conflicting or unclear and creating fear, it's the actual statute. The purpose behind the farm dwelling and employee housing provision is to incentivize and provide a benefit, not a burden or restriction greater than the current farm dwelling restrictions. If it is a greater restriction or even a deprivation of a significant property interest, it's likely a result of bad drafting and with unintended consequences. HRS 205-46D requires review of incentive measures for IL to de determine their effectiveness and allow for modification as needed. If the farm dwelling and employee housing incentive is having the opposite effect of an incentive, as we've seen here, and in fact, deterring and dissuading and causing fear to farmers and potential farmers, it should be fixed. Alternatively, the farm dwelling definition could conform to the IL definition. If the commission accepts the city's recommendation, it can de defer designation while legislation is made during the upcoming legislative session to fix and repeal portions of the statute that can be interpreted as more burdensome than beneficial to farmers and landowners. With regard to the city's requirement uh, to provide notice, under HRS section 205-47D, the county process for the recommendation of IL calls for reasonable action to notify each owner of, the, of those lands by mail or posted notice on the affected lands to inform them of the potential designation of their lands. The county notice is to inform landers of, landowners of potential designation, not actual designation. Again, the city mailed out notices to the 1800 landowners and a second notice by mail, mail consistent with the plain language of HRS section 205-47D. In addition, the city provided public notice, notices through newspaper advertisements and other media of the many community meetings and city council meetings on the IL recommendation. What are the steps forward for the commission? Moving forward, there are a lot of issues that may have muddied what your next steps are. But to be clear today, all you should consider and determine is whether one, the city properly complied with the county process for identification of IL under HRS section 205-47, and that the properly, I'm sorry, the city properly applied the standards and criteria for IL identification under HRS section 205-44. The city properly complied with the county process for identification of IL. The city first identified and mapped potential IL except lands that have been designated through the state and county planning processes for urban use. The city developed maps of potential lands for designation of IL in consultation with landowners, interest groups, et cetera. The city developed an inclusive process for public involvement in the identification of potential lands and the development of maps of lands to be recommended as IL, including a series of meetings. And the city took notice of those lands that have already been designated by IL by the commission and it took reasonable action to notify each owner of those lands by mail on the affected lands to inform them of the potential designation of their lands. And consistent with the AG's opinion, the city properly applied the standards and criteria of HRS section 
by evaluating all eight criteria, weighing them against each other to meet the purposes of Article 11, Section, section 3 of the Hawaii State Constitution and the objectives and policies for IAL. If the commission accepts the city's recommend recommendation today, which is all that you need to do today, it can then at a later date, either fully designate the, the map as recommended by the city or designate some, but not all of the parcels, even excluding those who have objected. If the commission chooses to exclude certain parcels, the downside is that it will be counter to, to the IL objective to have contiguous agricultural lands, which is important in preventing disruptive spot zoning and providing larger swaths of land to create better economies of scale for agriculture. However, it would be possible for an excluded landowner to come in later for voluntary IL designation. There's no time limit or deadline for IL designation. By accepting the city's recommendation at IL, the commission will undoubtedly have I'm sorry, we'll undoubtedly take on the second phase of this immense task. You'll have to decide whether to include or exclude certain parcels, whether to conduct contested case hearings, and most importantly, it will need to make the ultimate determination of IL designation. There's a lot more work to be done by the commission and the counties, including the creation of effective incentives, but this is what is required under the IL process. In the alternative, the commission may remand to the city for further review or clarification. However, to be frank, it is unlikely that the city will be back before the commission on this IAL anytime soon. Again, the city's recommendation and the designation of IAL complies, I'm sorry, the recommendation for the designation of IAL complies with the requirements of sections 205, 47, 48, and 49 Hawaii revised statutes and the proper procedural, legal, statutory, and public notice requirements were met in developing this recommendation. Based on the record before you, the city has crossed the goal line. To ask for anything more would be moving the goal line on the city. We did what we were supposed to do under the IAL statute and rules, and we are done. This proceeding and your decision today is unlike any that this or any other commission has experienced. It is not comparable to any of the district boundary amendments or voluntary IL designations, which are for the most part neatly packaged and limited to a few parcels, a single landowner, and far less acreage. This process is unprecedented, it is far from perfect, it is involuntary, it has already taken 13 years evaluating and balancing of standards and criteria, extensive outreach, hundreds of thousands of acres and dollars. As a result, you are understandably discomforted by this whole process, but the payoff, the end game to protect and bolster agriculture for an entire island, which holds 67% of the state's population for future generations is monumental and more crucial than any other decision you've made as a commissioner, as a commission, and moves us all closer to a goal set out decades ago. The decision is up to you Oahu's IL lives or dies today based on your decision, no pressure. But no matter what your decision with or without IL, I assure you the city is dedicated to support, expand and reinvigorate agriculture throughout the island and to finding ways to help farmers truly succeed. The city will continue to work with farmers to develop incentives. Mahalo for this opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Apuna, particularly for the no pressure statement that just made it all okay. Um, commissioners. Questions for the city. <clears throat> Commissioner Chang, followed by Commissioners Wong and Cabral. Um. Where does one begin, Ms. Apuno? Um, undoubtedly, this is very difficult. I will tell you, um, I, I came into today's hearing uh, sort of with an inclination. However, after hearing Mr. Miyamoto, because in my view, I, I think the, the city, and maybe it's because I've worked in government, 
did the best that it could given what it had. Um, but what I also heard from Mr. Yamamoto, Miyamoto today was a willingness and a recommendation to remand this back and to work with DPP. And I know both in your pleadings and your, and your statement right now, which it is very unlikely that DPP will take this on again. So, um, and I'm sure that is the party line. Quite frankly, I'm glad that you're here and not Dean Uchida, as I'm sure Dean would, he would describe this in a very different way. But um, if you have assistance from the Farm Bureau, they help to seek legislation for funding. You fix, you know, some of the uncertainties regarding or misunderstandings or misinterpretations regarding farm dwelling. And I am very concerned about the lack of um, incentives. I think that that really is, to me, that's the spirit of this law. I think, I, and, and I know this was done before you came on board, but I think there was a lot of checking off the boxes here and not so much following the spirit of the law. Um, I recognize that the people who came before us over the last several months do not represent a majority of the people that you've designated. And I think those people are out there farming. But I saw the farm, I view the Farm Bureau as sort of representing their interests because these guys are out there farming. But so my question to you is being very candid and you know, we have a long relationship with you. Um, if there is collaboration and assistance from the Farm Bureau, um, you mentioned going back to the ledge to fix. Um, what is the likelihood of this uh, DPP taking on this, this task, but with a different um, partners like the Farm Bureau and those that Mr. Miyamoto mentioned? So if you're talking about a remand and a redo of the process, um, again, I think we've, we've met in a way, yes, we've checked all the boxes. So I don't think there's more we could do, but we are completely welcome to working with the Farm Bureau, the different farmers to start looking at what incentives are needed to help these farmers. I think we can do that. We think we can move forward and try to really address some of the um, barriers to farming and figure out how we can help them so that when the designation is made that they can take advantage of these different opportunities. Um, but, and we can do that. We, I don't think we need to stop and look backwards. We should just move forward and try to create those incentives. And with everyone that um, is affected, whether it's the Farm Bureau or farmers or um, other agencies, we, are, we, we can definitely uh, do that. Okay, so bottom line, it is unlikely that the city will go back and redo this process all over again. I think without specifically pointing to where we have failed under the county process or how we um, use the standards and criteria in an improper way, I don't know how we're supposed to go back and change anything without knowing what that error was. As far as um, you know, the farm dwelling issue, I don't know if that's for us to fix, but it, I think we agree that people shouldn't be scared by it and there should be clarity. Um, it should be benefits, it should make people want to be part of IL and not run from it. So if that needs to be fixed, that's a state statute that you know, uh, needs to probably be looked at just for the comfort of all these people that are testifying and feel that it's doing things that um, don't want them to be part of IAO. But there's also an enforcement issue as well, right? That the DPP has, has jurisdiction over. Clearly not everybody's farm dwelling is associated with an agricultural use. And DPP, um, Besides enforcement, DPP is also issuing building permits to people 
um, on these ag lots to permit them to do these dwellings. Now that may have done happened before your term, but you know, people relied upon those permits that were given knowing that that was a zoning. So, uh, you know, I think, and I'm sure this is gonna be on a case by case, but um, in your opinion, um, knowing what you know now, would you do anything different on outreach and consultation? You know, I, tr I truthfully, I don't think I, I can say I would have done anything differently. I think when an agency has this um, directive and it, it is pretty broad and, and loose, you just try to find what the check boxes are and you, you do everything you do, can do to check them off. I mean, it doesn't sound uh, probably not the answer you want to hear, but um, I think we're trying to we're trying to do the right thing under the statute. That's the guidance that we've been given um, and the administrative rules. So I can't say that I would necessarily do it any differently. It's it's been a very long process, so many different people involved. Um, so I I can't fault anyone. Um, before me that didn't do the right thing. I think they try to do everything possible to follow what was uh, required of them. And you're right. I mean, I'm not faulting anyone. I think due to just time, the length of time that it took, if this would have happened in three years, I think that would have been very different outcome than what we have today. But I suspect you would agree with me and we've, we've sat through numerous hearings together, merely checking off the box on community outreach and engagement. I mean, obviously many of these people have no idea what IAL means. They think you're gonna evict them or take their land away. So there's a lot of misinformation. Now, I'm not saying that reflects everyone, but merely checking off the box, I don't know if that's the right thing. That is, you know, you're complying with the law. So, okay, um, I will let other commissioners um, have, you know, address any questions they may have to you. But um, I appreciate the hard place that you're in, the rock and the hard place, and you guys are trying to do the best you can. But finally, I, I thought I also heard you say, if the lands aren't designated IAL, it really doesn't change the city's commitment to supporting sustainable ag and that you will continue to support them, try to adopt some incentives. So it doesn't diminish the city's commitment to sustainable ag if there's not an ILL, IAL designation. Is, is that what I heard you say? Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right. Thank you, Ms. Apona. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioner Wong followed by Cabral. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Apuna. Uh, <clears throat> as you know, you know, we have laws and I understand we have laws and statutes and rules, but it was made up from the people, the people to protect the people. And I, I mean, no offense, but I kind of take in some offense to your closing statement because we are here to help the people and protect the people and to protect the land. Our job to me is to assist, not to stop or stifle. Um, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, yes, we're gonna check, as Don said, uh, Commissioner Chang said, we're gonna check the boxes, but is that correct? Or is that the only thing we have to do? Or is it, do we have to do more to help, to alleviate, you know, we're, everyone doesn't like government. You, we, we heard it from all the testifiers. They don't trust government. And if government says we are checking the box and that's it, too bad, then why do we have, you know, what is government then? Government is stifling to me. Government should be there to assist uh, and to help the people. I, I, you know, I'm very concerned about, you know, yes, you guys did attack, you guys did an outreach, but. From what I heard and gathered, people didn't said, so I didn't get any callback. I didn't do anything. You know, nothing came back. And so I'm just trying to say, if we remanded it back, it, 
I hope that the county understands they are for the people, not for the laws also, but yes, they're the, for the laws, but they have to protect the people and assist the people in protecting our small farmers. So that's what I'm trying to say, Ms. Akuna. I know it's not a question, it's just a statement, but I just hope you understand where I'm coming from and I wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I mean, I, I, sorry if I offended anyone, it wasn't my intention. I think we're trying to do what the state wants us to do under the law. Um, and so, and we do want to do what's right for, for the people. Um, but, you know, I, a lot of this, even I think that we heard today that the law itself, the IA law, it's, it, it wasn't, um, maybe didn't provide some of the protections that people are asking for, whether it's an appeal process or specific way to opt out. I think we did take in any information um, that was given to us and we tried to respond accordingly. Um, but yeah, I think that there could be more within the, the IL process that would have satisfied the general public and the landowners. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't in there and, and I can understand a lot of the, the issues that we're hearing today. But we, we do, our, I think our intention is to help, to definitely help farmers to grow agriculture and to do the right thing. Yeah, so I got a question for you. Um, you know, um, Mr. Miyamoto, I think Ms. the first test farm, Ms. Malufiti said, we're willing to go to the legislature because right now it's an unfunded mandate. I mean, unfunded meaning for those people out there, meaning you didn't get any money to do this. So mm -hmm. it's a mandate, uh, it's a law that, has no money attached to say, here, county, here's the money. So if if we remand it back, could you, because session is coming up, could you work with Farm Bureau and others to say, we'll go back, try fix the law, plus get some funding? I mean, maybe you, that's a possibility to work at, look at too. So I, I just wanted to say that for the record. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, again, we'd have to know what we would have to fix because I don't think it's clear what how we aired under the law, but we're definitely open to working with the Farm Bureau and others to, you know, if there's legislation that would be helpful. Uh, thank you, Ms. Apuna. Um, I wish you a happy new year if I didn't say it before, but um, thank you, Ms. Apuna again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Wong. Thank you, Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Cabral. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Ms. Apuna. And you always write up such a good uh, and make such a good presentation. It's some always so, so pleasant and somewhat convincing, but I don't don't agree. <laughs> so so um, but it's been touched on now quite a bit, including your last few comments. And I am more and more hearing or feeling like, well, absolutely. The situation is flawed. However, it came down, whatever happened, there's a whole lot of problems here because that a whole lot of people didn't know, don't know, whatever, whatever. And then on top of that, I get the more in deep, deep we get into it, I feel like that the like what you just said, there are um, some flaws in the in the actual legislative laws that was passed, or the details of it that when put to actual application do not work out. So um, do you think that it should go back to the legislature? Is that something you would see us be able to try and do to send it back to the legislature for a better rewrite or clarity before the city and county would want to attack this again? I think you could accept our recommendation and still move forward with making some uh, changes to the statute. I think that we should all move forward in every you know capacity. We we definitely have satisfied whatever the conditions have been set up currently. Um, the I think the issues with some of the discrepancies on the farm dwelling that's not our doing or we didn't create the discrep discrepancies and we don't need to address those in order for the commission to just accept our recommendation. What I'm saying though is that 
once you accept the recommendation and before you actually designate, there can be things done, such as legislation that maybe uh, repeals the farm dwelling portion so that people aren't concerned that it's not clear or that it's taking away certain rights. Um, and you can also um, not include cert certain parcels, but in the end, if we move forward, if you accept our recommendation and we do these things, we can you know, designate IL and work on incentives and just move closer to protecting and preserving agricultural land, which is, which is the main objective, right? To protect it and to help invigorate it. So um, I don't think we need to stop. We can just go forward and make some little changes if possible but keep moving forward and doing certain things in tandem um, is completely uh, allowed and under the statute. Um, and it's a matter of time and uh, we should keep going. I, I appreciate your commitment and your dedication to your new job title, but I gotta tell you, I'm really a long ways from wanting the way the city and county has moved forward doing this to have that go forward because it, it concerns me that there's potentially hundreds of people out there, if not thousands, who don't even understand what's going on to even know that they could opt out or whatever, whatever into the future. Um, so I, I would be, I'm, I'm not gonna support going forward. I can say that right now. And I'm just looking to see based on what comment, even some of your comments, as well as um, Mr. Miyamoto, and clearly based on all the people, I'm more and more thinking it should go back to the legislature. And I'd like to think that land use, as well as your office, could give it a whole lot of suggestions on how the clarity would need to be worked out, because we certainly don't wanna spend this many days, hours, not to mention all of the public people that have spent the hours meeting with us to testify and to write things, as well as the stress in between those hours that these individual farmers and ranchers have had to go through. I don't want to share that with any other county moving into the future. So, um, okay, thank you very much, though, for your dedication to the job. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Commissioner Ohigashi. I want to, um, I, uh, by saying that you're we're accepting your recommendation, it sort of misleads. Uh, not, sort of misleads what we're actually doing. What I'm, what I, what I think we're doing here is, you're you're saying you're telling us you're asking us to make a finding that the report recommendations that that coming from the city and county met all the requirements that we were, that um, there was meant to do, uh, was going out there and doing some adequate fact finding and um, determining where the line should be drawn. And it is for the use commission to make the determination utilizing due process tools that the Attorney General has indicated in their opinion uh, to make the final decision as to where these lands, whether or not these lands should be located within, should be designated IAL lands. Is that, is that my understanding of what your presentation is all about? Yes, I think that's correct. Today you, you can accept or write, um, find that the city uh, met the county process and the standards and criteria, and then it's the commission's duty to, or decision to actually designate the land um, for IL. And so, uh, that would leave the Land Use Commission with several options, right? Uh, one, it could uh, accept your recommendations in total as a finding of the commission that yes, this should be redesignated as ILS. Or two, it could say, hey, some parts of it we like, some parts of it we don't like. So these are the areas. Of it. Or three, we could just sit on it and do nothing. Isn't that right? Because I don't know of any time limit or time extension that we have. 
time requirement. Yeah, I'm not aware of a. I think that you need to find that the record is complete. Um, as far as once it's complete, I think you have 365 days within which to designate. But um, yeah, I think those are the only deadlines involved. So essentially we can say the record is not complete because the statute is incom uh, incomprehensible or unenforceable, or it's ambiguous and we will, um, before we complete the record, could ask the legislature to do so. Is that right? Um, so I think if you're talking about the rights, um, the rights, the property owner's rights with a designation, I think that's separate from what we're doing today and separate from whatever the county's influence is on what determines the rights of these landowners, the statute. Well, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about procedure and I'm okay. just not, I'm, I'm talking about if we ask, accept the report or using your words, accept your, the county's report and we, uh, we have these options. And it, so long as the record is not deemed complete by us, there is no time limit for us to act. We could make a determination that the record cannot be complete because the legislation is flawed. Is that right? I think you could you could sit on it, but again, I don't think that what the city and county has done, it's not flawed because of the process. I think there might be flaws in, you know, the the restriction. <laughs> I understand your arguments. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get the options Perfect. of The last thing is, is that what prejudice would there be to landowners if we chose number three, my option number three? Well, this potential designation have an effect on or detriment to the landowners. No, I think they're current um the current interests or uh rights are would remain the same until you made the designation of IL. Well your the city's position is they don't believe that there should there will be any detriment to the landowners how this is for the legislature to decide. Uh no no yeah no change to their to their current status as a landowner. Okay. And uh, the only reason why I'm asking you is just, I'm just trying to see what my options are in this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and happy new year too. Happy again. new year to you. Thank you, Commissioner Ohigashi. Commissioners, further questions for Ms. Apuna. Commissioner Giovanni. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Greetings, Ms. Apuna. Nice to see you in 2022. Nice to see you too, Commissioner. Just a quick follow up on Commissioner Oigashi's option number three. If we chose that and the Commission did not or decided not to act on it, um, is your interpretation? that the landowners would still have an option to voluntarily proceed to designate their own land as IAL. Yes, they, yes, they could voluntarily uh, designate their land. So any landowner that decided they wanted AIL would, could, could seek to do that voluntarily. And any landowner that did not want IAL by not acting and by the commission not acting would have status quo. Yes, that's correct. I think that the only difference is with the, the county's process, we're doing it for them. Um, if they do it on their own, they're gonna have to, yeah, on their, uh, on their own accord and with their own um, financial ability to do so, they would, they would come before you individually. Okay, thank you for that. I wanna move on to some other stuff. Your opening statement in the in the beginning of your statements today, uh, you talked about whether or not IAL precludes renewable energy developments. 
and you cited a very specific project which the LUC approved in recent months, which was named, which was actually called, uh, they call themselves an agrivoltaic project. Is that the one you referred to? Yes. Um, my perspective is that agricultural lands could be dedicated for agricultural purposes. They could seek, currently seek a special use permit to put on a renewable energy project. But if designated IAL, they would be forced to do an agrivoltaic option, basically that narrow option. Is that what you're saying when you mean it does not preclude renewable energy? Yeah, they would definitely have to have an agricultural, a significant, you know, substantial agricultural component. I just like the record to show that my interpretation of that project that we approved was in somewhat experimental. And it also included substantial acreage not dedicated to renewable energy that would be surrounding the solar panels that would be used for grazing. So I'm not convinced in my own mind that it's a classic, typical, prototypical project that could be characterized as something that would be straightforward and can be accommodated on IAL land without problem. I'm not, it's not a question, it's just my own perspective. So as much as I supported that project, I think it was unique and not prototypical of what we can expect for IAL land going forward. Right. And I agree, um, Commissioner, you know, we, we look at those case by case. And like you said, that was kind of experimental or something new. And, and we hope that um, some of these developers of renewable energy that they continue to look at the, the, the most um, really trying to come up with creative ways that go beyond and we're not we don't want to just have a few goats on uh, underneath the panels kind of thing. So it's a, it's a good opportunity for, for more development in that area, definitely. Well said, and I agree with your perspective. Uh, I wanna switch gears a little bit. And one of the things that really troubles me about what the county did and how they interpreted the, their role in this process was when they interpreted the intent of the legislation to do large, I think these are your words, large swaths of land that were contiguous and all IEL next to each other. And in doing so, uh, you avoid a patchwork of, of parcels owned by different entities, some of which would be IEL and some not. Is that a proper characterization of what, how you interpreted, how you implemented your process? So I think so. The, the policy and, and goals of IEL, it, it does recommend contiguous parcels. And I think I mentioned that larger tracts, I've heard, I don't know, at least five acres as far as economies of, sta of scale, it's, it's, it makes it easier for farmers to farm. And um, when you have spot zoning or you have pukas that aren't, IL or ag, they, they tend to threaten the surrounding areas with urbanization. Um, so it, it's more of a protective measure, but I understand there's, there's a lot of issues under that, whether it's smaller parcels, um, but it, it, all of these policies and um, standards that we've, we use, which are in this, you know, it's part of the standards and criteria um, I think we try to do as best as we could to interpret that and to apply it accordingly. Well, you, you may feel that way, and I can understand why you feel that way. But there's been an outpouring of the public that the small farm owners do not feel that way. They feel they're being swept up in the process and just in order to have a contiguous uh, swath of property really dominated by the larger landowners as opposed to the smaller landowners. And, and at the same time, we're hearing that they've not been given a process by which they, at least one that they understand or that they could follow through on, which would allow them to apply for an appeal, an exemption, or to opt out in doing so. 
so it, it seems to me to be out of balance. In fact, it seems to be out of balance to the benefit of the large, the large landowner at the large farm. And here I'm talking about small and large farms and the executive director of the Farm Bureau couldn't even tell me what the difference was between a small and a large farm. The criteria is just not there. But I could sense from the community members that have come forth, many of which who have lived in, on the, the land they own for decades, that one, two, three acres of land is a small farm. And I'm concerned that the what's driving the IAL are the land, the large landowners, and it may work very well for them. But I do not feel that the county has adequately addressed the concerns of, the, of what I call the small landowners. I, I'll just leave that that there. You can comment if you wish. Um, yeah, I understand um, what you're saying, Commissioner. I do think that you know the, the, the smaller farmers that are part of that, may, they're, maybe they're not every single small parcel, but uh, this county process is supposed to help them and provide them the opportunity to take advantage of the incentives. So it's a hard balance between um, the two. It is. Um, my other concerns were adequately questioned by my former, my, my other colleagues other commissioners so i will leave it at that chair i'll return it to you thank you Ms. clinton thank you commissioner thank you commissioner giovanni commissioners further questions commissioner axon thank you uh, mr chair i believe doing nothing is not the uh, the best option that we have uh we we need to give this uh property owners some closure. Uh, doing nothing is just putting uh, some kind of limbo uh, to everybody. So I'm just kind of wondering what is the series and how much series commitment on this. So besides the, besides accepting your recommendation, series recommendations, the other options we have will take time and not to mention some money. Uh, I'm just trying to kind of, your presentation to me is telling us we made, we made our recommendations, take it or leave it. That's how I, that's how I feel it, I feel uh, your presentation. So, Again, the, the, besides accepting your recommendations, the other options are, will take some time and money. If we accept your recommendation, I feel that the commission is gonna be ending up doing the work that city should have, did, should have done. You know, uh, if you take, giving it incentives or, uh, determining what you know, what properties as the option of opting out. So we're gonna end up doing the work if you go if you go with uh, uh, with your recommendation. The question I have is how much out of those options that we have, how much where where the city can assist us the most. So I think we we are definitely committed to working with uh, farmers and other agencies to to figure out the incentives part of the this whole process and trying to um, address that and and make it better for farmers um, who are in the IL designated areas. How about in this? If we kick it to the legislature, how we can, how you can help us, how the city can help us. Well, I think that specifically, if the issue about the farm dwellings and uh, employee housing is ca causing so much um, angst and fear, I would suggest that that be 
amended or repealed. Because if that's taken out of the equation, then we're just relying on the current definitions of um, farm dwelling. Um, and so there's no change in the rights of a potential IEL landowner. And then- Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Um, but I mean, I feel like this county, we've, we've gone through the whole process. I don't know where the other counties are. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're listening or watching and learning. Um, but if you want more in that process, if you wanna require more um, from the other counties as far as uh, appeal processes or other things that came up, I think you could add that. But um, I feel that the county has gone through the process itself and as it currently stands. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I hear you loud and clear and that's the uh, series of uh, position. The other option is probably out of the question, reminding it to uh, the DPP again. Uh, the, uh, uh, I guess based on your testimony, if you remind it, uh, the city is not gonna do anything on it. So uh, my out of questions kind of basically the process later, uh, where we accept your recommendation. I, I wanna kind of uh, see what comes, what process comes next. So I guess uh, the, uh, the question is for our executive officer or, or the chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Apuna. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Mahalo, Commissioner Axon. Commissioners. Further questions for Ms. Apuna? Commissioner Chang. Oh, sorry. Um, Commissioner um, Giovanni's discussion raised a point for me. Um, Ms. Apuna, you indicated one that um, if that the private landowners, they could, there's nothing to preclude them from filing their own petition. Is that right? That's what you said? Yes. But my understanding when I go back and I look at the rules, if a private landowner seeks to petition, it is, don't they have to comply with adhere to chapter 343? Um, I don't recall. I don't I recall. I think so. And I think that's why this, the county process was deemed to be sort of facilitating, you know, a lot of these smaller farmers and and I think you even said the smaller farmers, and many of those are the ones who came before us, um, it's the incentives that were intended to help drive them. But in this case, we don't have those incentives. The large landowners, I think the incentives have been provided for in the statute. As long as they, they designate more than 51%, no other lands get designated. But for these farmers who have you know, less than five acres, the designation is the entire property. So I think, and I, as I understand your position, um, you know, what's, what you're saying is just accept, just find that the city has met, has satisfied all of the criteria. There's been adequate consultation and you have satisfied the criteria to designate because you've you had the tech and you've applied and you balanced all of the criteria in coming up with these maps. Is that that's basically what you're asking us to do today, right? Yes, I think that's what you guys are tax, tasked yeah. with today. But if any one of those are fundamentally flawed, for example, if there is a question about the adequacy of of the notification. Um, I mean, again, I, I think, you know, our exchange was, you guys did the best that you could, but the lapse of time creates these voids and it doesn't look like the city filled the void with anything. Um, at least for most of these people, they're, they got their information from LUC and I appreciate, I applaud the effort by LUC staff. I mean, they did an extraordinary job notifying, but that's how most of these people got notice or through the lawyers. 
but it sounds like the city went on silent. So if we find that you checked off the box, you know, in years three, three and four, but you did nothing over the last seven years, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying that that's that that's adequate notice, um, because through that lapse of time, the city provided no additional information. I think at the beginning when you had consultants, you did a lot of outreach. So again, if what I'm hearing you ask us and what is what we're tasked with today, if we find that there is a fundamental flaw in either one of those, the consultation or the criteria, um, because Office of Planning has, um, OPSD is also, and we'll ask Ms. Cato, but they've recommended that there be some, some, um, some um, smaller parcels, less than two acres and uh, state land. So they've asked for things to be deleted. Um, and my, my concern is that if we start piecemealing and doing these deletions, that to me, that, that does impact the fundamental criteria that the city applied. So it's becoming for me much more difficult to even say procedurally that there's been adequate compliance given some of these additional issues that have been raised. So, okay, I just wanted to clarify that with you and that, um, yes, I just wanted to clarify that with you. So, okay, thank you very much, nothing further. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioners, anything further? I have some questions for Ms. Apuna. I know we've been going an hour I probably have five to 10 minutes worth. Um, do we want a break or do we want to finish my questions and then take a break? Okay. Ms. Apuna, um, I'm gonna start with quoting, I, I'll say I preferred and appreciated your written supplemental arguments far more than your oral closing today. Um, and you made a statement um, in your written that said, any dissatisfaction or frustration in the outcome of the county IL process should be directed at the IL statute that created the process, not the city that properly implemented the process. I think I've read that correctly. Yes. Okay. So I'll explore that. Um, touching first on what Commissioner Chang just mentioned. There was, how, how many years of a gap was there between the time when there, the city through its consultants held community meetings and you presented the final maps to the LUC? Uh, let me make sure I have it correctly. And I have staff available too who might, if they have it sooner than I do. Okay, so the, the third community meeting in IAEA was in 2017, November. And the petition was presented to us? In 2000, I'm not sure, uh, Dina? You know. Well, the city um, finalized our IAL report in 2018. And once we transmit it to council. Dina, um, I'm going to swear you in. Sorry. Swear oh, from sorry. the testimony you're about to give us the truth. Uh, yes. Okay. Dina Wong, please Dina continue. Wong's, uh, Department of Planning and Permitting, Planning Division. Um, once we transmitted to city council in um, 2018, don't have the exact date, um, it's in city council's hands and they do the notifications in terms of when it's gonna be uh, heard at city council and at the um, zoning and housing committee uh, meetings. 
Wh yeah. When did the LUC just focus? When did the LUC receive it in the city? Um, the complete record was transmitted um, 20, 2018. No, 20. Um, do you guys have that on you? I think it was last year. 2021. I believe you're correct. No, 2020. So either 20, 20, from 2017 to either 2020 or 2021, are we correct? Yes. Okay, thanks. So now I want to go back to questioning Ms. Apuna. So do you find that that gap in time still means that you fulfilled the requirements of the statute, despite that gap in time? In, in what sense are you saying that? Does that gap in time between when you held your last community meeting where you actually engaged with the public, giving them reasonable notice, to when it came to us, do you feel that you've complied with the statute in that regard? I think so. And I think that the additional hearings by the city council um, and notices continue to- Notices inform. to property owners? public notices, notices yes. to the public. The city council meetings. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any idea how many properties changed hands between 2017 and then coming to the Land Use Commission of the 1800 properties involved? No, I don't know if Dina, do you guys have any? No. So would whether or not a new property owner who had acquired this between the last public meeting and this coming up, um, how would that perhaps affect your definition of reasonable notice to the property owner? Or are you saying it doesn't matter? Well. It's a simple question, Ms. Apuna. The reasonable notice as if, it's, if, if there are some new property owners from the time you went from 2017 to when it came to the LUC in 2020 or 21, three to four years, you still feel that these new property owners have received reasonable notice from the city. And which we don't know how many because you're not reporting to us how many there are. You, you yes, no, or I don't know in terms of you feel that that complies with the reasonable notice requirements of the statute. I don't know. I mean, it's- Okay, it's that's fine. Um, do you feel, given the various interpretations of the practical impact of the differing definitions of what you can do with housing on IAL versus non-IAL ag land, do you feel that the representations made by the city and its consultants have been consistent and accurate throughout the entire process? I think we've uh, consistently said that we didn't, we thought it was little to no effect. But do you recognize that there are perhaps reasonable people who disagree with that? I believe you've stated yes. in your response to other commissioners. Yes, okay. yes. Um, we've heard, we, we haven't conduct, got sort of evidence other than oral testimony from landowners of people saying, hey, I have this land that's rocky or it's underwater or it's half in a stream bed or you know, it's just coral fill or it's filled old landfill, but it's clearly not I it's clearly not farmable land or I have no access to water. Um, how explain what am I missing that's where your transmission of that to us as a proposed parcel that make that should be designated as IL sort of fulfills the statute's requirements. Well, I think, you know. We tried to apply, you know, we evaluated and applied all of the eight criteria. Like these are the eight criteria. None of them uh, say to disallow certain types of property, whether they're too rocky, they're too steep, there's, uh, you know, they're not farmable. The, the criteria we have and the basic policies of the IAL statute are um, 
are pretty general. And, and I think based on the process that we went through in identifying how the criteria should be applied and their actual application when looking at the, the maps and comparing them, um, and also the calculation of what would actually, that the, the end result would go from 100, I'm sorry, 132,000 acres down to, you know, 10, and I think there's a lot lost. And I, I guess of, here's what I'm trying to get at. You're proposing to us, you said we could accept your thing in entirety mm -hmm. as one of our options, which would designate as IAL based on the information of the limited information from landowners testimony is clearly not farmable agricultural land. How does that fulfill the statute? Because the statute says it, it doesn't have to necessarily that it has the capability. I mean, the. Um, that the, one of the um, objectives of IEL as it is defined as important ag lands is that it will contribute to, I'm sorry, it's needed to promote the expansion of agricultural activities and income for future, um, even if currently not in production. Um, so I think it's that the possibilities can happen with that land. I mean, you say it's not farmable, but you know, I think one witness said it's not farmable because there's maybe some pollutants, there's some tires on it, there's some keave, but is it really not farmable? I mean, if they're able to somehow clean it up. Um, so I don't, I think that it's trying to be as inclusive as possible and to, there's nothing in the law that says that we have to um, take out certain physical um, lands with certain physical features. Okay, I hear your response. Thank you. I, my last, I think, question on this line is, so, you know, one of the things that happened that I think has um, made this so much more difficult is a, a letter went out from a private law firm that made some fairly write-in statements about the impact of this action. Things saying like that, you know, this might be their last chance to do anything and this was going to dramatically affect people's property rights. Was there any legal requirement in the statute that the city, which was aware of this letter going out and aware of its petition coming in front of the LUC, was there any legal requirement the city had to reach out and say, hey, 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 you know, you, you might be hearing these things, but that's not actually what we mean. That's not what we think is going on. Is there any legal requirement for you to do it? No, but I think we're trying to address some of those inaccuracies here. Just here. Um, you know, I, I think. Did the mayor make a statement? Was no. Was a press yes. release put out from DPP? No. Was a mailing done to any of these people? No. But that's not legally required. It is not. I think the thing that bugs me the most, well, particularly when in your closing statement, when it's it's all up to you, I can't remember what your catch for no pressure. That somehow implied that if we don't move forward with this process, we're setting back Hawaii's agriculture and agricultural land protection today. Um, I do not think that the letter from the law firm that alerted many people to this was completely accurate, fair, or balanced in its representation, but it clearly set people up in arms and has made, it has caused many people to be very concerned, very fretful, very scared. It's not a couple of years where we've particularly needed additional human suffering going around. And what I have found lacking in the city's presentation throughout this entire process, and particularly today, is any sort of expression, meaningful expression of sympathy, even as the differing interpretations from that letter are put forward. 
I found it very distressing. Sorry, I couldn't hear the last part. That I find it very distressing that the city has not responded with, in essence, any emotional content in addition to your legal arguments. That's just the chair's opinion. I don't think I have oh. anything further, but you may respond. I mean, it, this is completely exhausting. I, I, um, it, it, we're trying to follow the law. We're trying to do everything that's required under the statute. And we're being told it's not enough. And we have, right, you're right, outside influences that are creating all of this anxiety. Um, it's, it's all very frustrating um, based on everything that has been put into this. And I don't, I, you're right. I don't know what to say. I, I, the only thing I um, can say and, and is that we want to do more for these farmers. Um, somehow, I mean, we're trying to do that internally and reaching out to different agencies and um, interests. And uh, I think that this whole process makes it hard to just do what, what we're trying to do. And sometimes maybe it's just a matter of us doing it without um, being under this uh, microscope of how we're doing it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, this has taken out a lot out of us, I think, but it's not, I don't mean for us to not um, care about what's going on. We certainly care and and don't like hearing how landowners feel that <clears throat> their land is going to be taken away or um, they're going to be kicked out of their houses. Certainly not the intention or anything that the county would want. We just want to try to um, uh, do what's right for agriculture on this island and for the people that are trying to do that, which are farmers who are already struggling. So I don't know what else to say. Chair Shoyer, this is Dina. Can I just add that, um, you know, we, we definitely hear the concerns of the landowners and, you know, um, in hindsight, perhaps we could have done a better job at uh, educating the general community about what IAL really and truly means um, for their own property rights and things of that sort. But I think what's before the commission is really looking at setting um, broad policy that covers the entire island and not so much looking at every individual landowner because this isn't about like approving a specific project or um, a certain type of regulation that would change their rights. So from that perspective, um, you know, we definitely want to hear what the landowners have to say, and it's something we could work on in the future when we do our community outreach. But you know, what what's before us now is really setting long term policy on on protecting and preserving ag land for the future. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Apuna. I have nothing further, Commissioners. Um, it is one forty. To um, propose a 10 minute break. We will then hear from any final comments from OPSD and Department of Agriculture. Have a chance, I'll offer a chance for Ms. Apuna to make any final short statement and then we'll go into deliberation. Reconvene at 152. We have another minute. Um, we have Commissioners Chang, Scheuer, Cabral, and Axon. Oigashi, Giovanni Wong. We just need Edmund.
There's still technically a minute to go. There's Edmund. Okay. It's 152. We're back on the record. Um, offering the opportunities for any final comments to OPSD, Ms. Kato, Earl Yamamoto from the Department of Agriculture, any final statement slash rebuttal from Ms. Apuna, and then we'll go into deliberation. Ms. Kato. Thank you, Chair, uh, Commissioners. I just have a few brief comments. Um, as stated in OPSD's written testimony, OPSD believes that the city met the requirements for its development and submission of recommendations of potential land suitable for designation as IAL under HRS Chapter 205 as the law is currently existing. The IAL law requires the city to develop maps of potential lands for designation as IAL in conformance with the specific statutory requirements set out in HRS 205-47. The city provided a detailed description of the efforts they took to meet the IAL requirements in their supplemental brief, so I'm not gonna go over that. Uh, OPSD believes that the city has met their base statutory requirements. Um, the, city, the city recommends potential lands for designation as IAL, but it does not itself designate any lands as IAL. So these are recommended maps. The LUC must then conduct its own independent review and choose what lands to designate as IAL. Under HRS 205-489, the city's maps are just one of the things that the LUC needs to consider. The LUC can determine with the guidance of its legal counsel how and what process it needs to and will provide in its review, its own review and designation, final designation of plans for IAL and its final adoption of the maps. Uh, regarding the discussion on incentives for IAL, uh, OPSD's understanding is that there isn't a specific timeline for counties to determine the proper incentives that they you know, would like to pursue. So while providing incentives is of course an important part of the IAL law and it was the intent to provide incentives, I'm not sure that's necessarily a prerequisite to the county IAL process. Uh, as Donna Puna mentioned, if this matter is remanded back to the city I think it should be made clear what requirements the city failed and what actions that they need to take in order to correct and meet those requirements. So just specific instructions would be good. Um, also, I, I was discussed earlier, but deferring the matter to seek statutory changes or adding more incentives is also an option. Uh, OPSD also provided written comments with respect to the suitability, suitability of the lands recommended by the city, but I understand that that is not before the commission today. So I, unless you want to hear from me on that, I, I'm not commenting on that. Uh, thank you, that's all the comments I have. Thank you, Ms. Cotto. Commissioner's questions for Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, beginning with Commissioner Wong. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Kato, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I, I, I guess long time ago, they used to have something called civics class. And uh, sorry, that's showing my age, okay? <laughs> but anyway, I remember the statement that my teacher said is, government is by the people for the people. And laws are made for the people by the people. Your statement, as I told, uh, Ms. Apuna is, yes, you're checking boxes. Yes, you're following the laws. You're following the rules. But what about the people? Where's, where's, that, where's the heart? Where's the knowledge that I'm helping the people? So what is, I know you're saying, yes, they followed all the boxes. They checked the boxes. It's almost like EIS. But where is that issue that we just heard all these testimonies from all these testifiers for how many months? that's saying, you may be hurting me, or I didn't get any information on this, or I, you know, I just bought the place, I don't know knowledge. What, how, where's o, OP's issues on this? Or where's their statements to say, hey, you know, maybe we, the planning wasn't 
all the way thought through, the steps done as a planner should have been done a little bit longer. What is your statement on that? My understanding of what the IL law is and what it's intended to be is that it is intended to be for the people, for the benefit of the people. It's to preserve agricultural land for the future generations. Um, you know, it supports sustainability. And my, I do understand that it was intended to provide incentives and it did provide some incentives at the state level, at least there were tax benefits. Um, there should probably be more incentives, but I think that's a thing that needs to be done through the yeah. legislature or at the county level. Um, I think that there has been a lot of misunderstanding as I'm listening to the public testimony. Uh, there's been a lot of comments about how land is being taken by this IL designation or how their use is gonna change but from my understanding of what IL does is IL is an over, is an overlay. It's a resource overlay, and it's not intended to change the use of the property because this property is already agricultural land, and it should be used for agricultural purposes, not as a junkyard, <laughs> um, or you know, <laughs> right. or parking lot or something. Um, there is supposed to be intent agriculture on agricultural lands and the IL does not change that. The IL yeah. designation does not change that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I agree with everything you're saying, with Sapuna saying that IL is a planning tool. It's it's an overlay as you just stated. But for the common farmer, the guy who's getting their hands dirty, mm -hmm. you know, they don't understand what a planning tool is. They don't understand what, you know, what it means to be an overlay. They only know, you know, I'm planting my seeds, I'm gonna water it, I'm hoping for sun, I'm gonna fertilize it, and I'm gonna take it to market. You know, it's growing, grow and take it to market. So what I worry about is the ex explanation to, you know, Farmer John to say, mm -hmm. hey, we are not gonna take your land. You're gonna keep it, but we wanna protect you so you can farm forever. You know, that's what, what I'm worried about, That that discussion hasn't gone to that point yet, to that, you know, to that level. And let's say I'm a gentleman, I shouldn't use the word gentleman farmer, but I only have one acre in my backyard and I'm growing papaya trees and banana trees just for my own family's consumption. Because the IAL is so broad or so, it, it hasn't been defined enough that I worry that that one acre parcel, maybe I want to use it in the future and say, I'm going to come to the city and say, I'm going to sub move it to urban or rural and, you know, subdivide it for my son or my daughter or my grandkids, you know, and I will not allow me to do that. They're going to say, I can't do anything except farm and I'm going to die. And what they're going to do with it, except have a goat on it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I worry about is just a discussion that, that, it's, it's being limited. So I understand where you're coming from. I hear what you just said that yes, the city did do what their due diligence to the point that they could. But when I know that our, our staff, sorry, the land use staff went beyond that, went and said, let's send out more, you know, letters and notices, like some of our testifiers said, this is the first time. Um, it, it, it bothers me as, you know, you know, Joe Blow here, you know, just thinking about those things. So it's just more of a statement. And, but I do hear what you're saying too. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Chang. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Ms. Kato. I've got just two, well, one question first and then uh, 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 another two questions. First, um, I know you said you're not going to comment on specific, um, you know, some of the other things that you included in your your filings, but you did ask for exclusion. Is mm -hmm. that correct? The two acres. That's correct, and I, I can discuss it. I just was responding to right. um, the chair's statement that we're not talking about that. So, but you are you are advocating, essentially, a a new criteria, because there's nothing in the eight criteria that says 
no more, um, you know, has to be greater than two acres. So OPSV is through your filings, you are, you are advocating um, a new criteria. One, the size, right? As something that the OUC should consider. Right. We so, just think it makes practical sense. No, I, I, I understand and I appreciated that you went and highlighted so it became very clear. But that's probably based upon, um, I think, your documents. That was probably about almost 800 TMKs. I mean, that's, that's, that's like about, that's probably about a third of the 1800, substantial amount, probably would address a lot of the, the testimony that we've heard. So um, I understand why you may not have commented on it, but I think it doesn't go to, you know, designating individual lots. It is more applying the criteria. So I think it, it would have been helpful, but I guess, I do want to just elaborate. I, um, I share Commissioner Wong and Commissioner Schars. Um, I think it's 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 a sentiment of the role of government, and and quite frankly, I look to the office of OPSD as really, you know, helping us be hmm, sort of that looking at larger policies, not looking at just checking off the box, but looking at um, what is the right thing to do? What is, and here we have both, I, I feel both you and, and Ms. Apuna, you are uniquely situated in a position where you can advocate to do what's right not to do what's just checking off the box. You are both, you know, government has had its short end of the stick and it's not because, I mean, a lot of it has been government's doing. There is a great mistrust of government. I mean, many of, you know, both Ms. Apun and yourself, you have sat through many of our hearings where community members here for the first time about a project at a public hearing. I mean, that's too late. We all know that's too late. But both of you have an opportunity through your positions to really advocate to doing, to, to beyond just the project that's before you, but how do we reinstill trust in government? How do we acknowledge that we could have done better and that when someone says something like, oh, I'm gonna be evicted, we shouldn't just let that sit there. We should respond to that and reassure that person that that's not what the ILA, IAL designation does. I'm not gonna evict you. Because in the absence, in, in the absence of good information, people are gonna fill that void with misinformation. The longer misinformation continues on, and you know, I do a lot of community outreach. When perception becomes reality, and here we are at that point, the perception that IAL is, 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 is hurting small farmers, clearly that wasn't the intent of the law, but that is the perception. The media is picking that all up. Everybody who's attending our hearings is picking all of that up. But you both have an opportunity to correct that. And it kind of puts LUC kind of in an awkward position because we kind of look like if we if we shut this down, we're against ag. I don't think that's that, that's going to be the point. But you know, it I guess it is the role that both of you have an opportunity to play to reassure the community. And I think this is what Commissioner Wong is talking about, you know, and Commission and and our chair about. Um, you know, it's, it is that trust and that emotion that's missing here. And I, I guess that's, that's sort of where I am, mm, um, I'm leaning towards that, feeling that, because I think the community has felt that this has been the only venue for them to voice their concerns. And if we do, if, if we just accept Ms. Apuna, what the city's done, 
many of these people will lose trust that LUC is, we're just, we're just rubber stamping. So, I mean, I think all of us are gonna take a very hard look at, at what you've presented to us, but, but that's sort of, that's my little editorial comment, I'm sorry, but I do look at both of you as being in positions to do more. So sorry, but I just wanted to say that. So um, that, you know, Ms. Kato, you too. I mean, I think you, ha you, have a, you have a great opportunity before you, you know, to look at those large policies in the context of our LUC um, dockets. So um, I you. would just ask you to, to look at that as well when you make your comments. Okay, so enough of my little editorial, Mr. Chair. I probably said more than enough. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chang. I'm sure we'll have a robust discussion in deliberation. Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you, Chair. Ms. Sato, um, I, I'm assuming that you heard my earlier comments and questions regarding the uh, approach that the county, city and county took in trying to apply criteria in such a way that large swaths of contiguous land were designated IAL and in the process swept up a lot of small parcels. Is that correct? You know what I'm talking about? I recall that discussion. Okay. There were a lot of questions, <laughs> sorry. That's fine. Um, but I sense that that is the same type of concern that OPSD may have had when they've when you put forth your recommendation regarding the exclusion of the small less than two acre parcels. Is that correct or not correct? I think that, rec that recommendation was um, based in part on what we, um, the comments from Department of Agriculture and what they said made sense. So um, we thought it made sense to have two acres just because Smaller than that, it's um, under separate ownership has diminished resource value for long-term agricultural use. Um, but I do also understand the point of not wanting patchwork. It's like, is IL, non-IL, IL, non-IL. So there is an interest in trying to keep together parcels, particularly if they're under the same ownership. So, you know, say a landowner owns a lot of parcels in one area. Uh, I can ask, understand that interest. Sorry for interrupting you. Let me ask my question again in a little bit different way, maybe simpler. And if it's better referred to the Department of Agriculture because you said you took your initiative from them, that's fine. I'll ask them when they when they testify. My question is, why? What prompted you to make that recommendation? What did you see in the process? What was the flaw? that prompted you to make that recommendation? Why did you do it? I'm not sure that I would call it a flaw so much as a recommendation that seemed to us to make sense. To make um, sense, to correct what, to do what? what? What are you trying to accomplish? And uh, I'm not sure if I know how best to answer that. Uh, well, I'm in, interested in your answer from a process point of view, the, not, not, the, not the process of this hearing, but the process that the county undertook that, re, that somehow manifest that you felt prompted or you needed to, or it was better or more practical to make that recommendation. Why did you do it? What did, I think it's, that, what, what did you, you and the Department of Agriculture see that prompted you to do that? Because I think it could point to something that was problematic with the process that the city and county did. If it wasn't, explain it to me. Well, I don't think that that was a specific part of the criteria that was discussed and considered. It's just another consideration that we had that we thought of so there were eight criteria you're adding you're suggesting it be a ninth why 
we're not saying that small properties are completely unuseful as ag. We're saying that small parcels just have less ag usefulness. It's not a statutory criteria for IAL land. It's kind of a, you know, it's a sliding scale. The smaller it is, the less likely, if, if it's a small parcel under two acres in size, it's less likely to be useful as IAL, but doesn't mean that it can't be or that it isn't. In some in certain circumstances, it may make sense to add those properties, or at least some of those properties. But this is, when we're talking about, you know, the county city IAL, it's a lot of land to consider. So I think it's very difficult to try and look at each property on a parcel by parcel basis. It's so unfortunately, there are some that may have fallen through the cracks. But I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. Commissioners, any further questions for OPSD? I will have one brief and hopefully focused question, Ms. Cotto. It is the same one of the same questions I asked for Ms. Apuna. Please defend the idea that with the four-year gap, three to four-year gap between the last public meeting and the presentation of materials, a complete record to the Land Use Commission, considering deaths, change in ownership, and other matters, how this constituted reasonable notice. I think that our feeling is that the city, all of the things that they did in their process, we feel like they have tried their best to do as much as possible and to meet their statutory requirements. If the commission feels that it's short, then that's within your discretion to determine. And so, I, I just want to clarify, when I say um, that the city's maps are just a recommendation, it re it's really just a recommendation. I think that the commission can, if they want to provide more process at this stage, they can. For landowners, I think that they can reject um, and change the recommendations. They can consider other things. So you just to clarify your answer, mm -hmm. you think it is reasonable that for some landowners, the only notice that they have received prior to the LUC taking this matter up was that this matter was being considered at a regular meeting of the city council. That I was mean, a reasonable I, notice to landowners. I have heard the public testimony that some landowners did not receive notice. I can't I have no way of verifying whether that's correct or not. I, I, I'm going to assume that among the 1800 people and based on testimony we received 1800 lots, some lots exchanged hands between 2017 and 2020 or 2021. I think that's sort of indisputable. So for at least those categories mm -hmm. of people, reasonable notice was met by a notice of the city council. Is that what OPSD's position is? I think OPSD can see that as reasonable notice, but I mean, we are not the decider of that. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Cotto. Appreciate it. Anything further? Mr. Yamamoto. Does the Department of Agriculture have anything to add at this time? Uh, the department did not submit any written, well, and as you all know, the department didn't submit any additional written uh, comments or, or any letter or notification other than what we had submitted back in February of 2021, I believe. However, we continue to support what the, the, the city's um, submittal the Land Use Commission. Uh, with respect to the, the, uh, the matters uh, of, of, of 
or being discussed here throughout the entire day before the Land Use Commission on, on these procedural matters and whether or not uh, the HRS requirements have been met. Um, uh, I have nothing to say about that. I, I, I would like to note, um, if I may, um, something about the, uh, the uh, with respect to that two acre um, thing that, uh, that, 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 uh, that was brought up as part of the Office of Planning and, uh, and Sustainable Development's uh, uh, re most recent submittal. Uh, we did, uh, or as a result of my quick look through of all the, the properties by TMK, uh, I, I, I thought that uh, having properties under two acres uh, would, uh, especially if they're isolated, and I did go through the TMK maps manually for this, but I was not able to do a comprehensive look, uh, obviously, I'm not a uh, geographic information system expert, but I, I, I chose the two acre minimum for, for mapping because of the city's uh, uh, zoning. Um, um, the zoning uh, uh, law or ordinance uh, uh, allows uh, a minimum lot size, of, lot size of two acres. And I thought that anything less than that would be, could, could be problematic. I have, I have no basis to explain that. It's just that uh, it seemed reasonable um, at the time I was doing this. And then I included that in our, in our letter of February, 2021, I believe. Um, and if I may, may make one more uh, comment, uh, there are some discussion um, by testifiers that, as well as uh, the, the commissioners that, uh, that perhaps uh, uh, going, having these, uh, uh, the, uh, the Oahu landowners of agricultural lands go through the, the uh, 205 dash, what is that, 45 process, the, uh, or 47 process, whatever HRS reference, uh, uh, the proper HRS references to the voluntary um, uh, identification and designation of, of their property as uh, important agricultural lands. Um, in, in having gone through all the existing, since the beginning, the Kauai Coffee uh, A and B uh, petition on Kauai back, uh, I don't know how many years ago, but um, now if the same kind of um, uh, expectation exists um, for smaller landowners and, and the farmers thereon, to have the same kind of resources, the same detail the, that is expected of the, uh, the larger um, petitioners to date, uh, that would, uh, I, I, I don't see how the, these uh, smaller landowners could, could uh, come up with the resources necessary to hire the, the professional staff in order you know, to, to accomplish uh, uh, even assembling a, a petition. And that, that has been a, a background concern of the, of the Department of Agriculture. Um, and that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Yamamoto. Commissioners, questions for the Department of Agriculture. Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you, Mr. Yamamoto, that for shedding light on the, the thought process that evolved there. And I'm not gonna question you about what you thought was reasonable or not, but more specifically, uh, you kind of defined a, comp a competitive process. On the one hand, if you're less than two acres, you're not automatically included in the county's recommendation, so you're left as is. But on the other hand, if, if you are left out and you want to become IAL, you can't afford to do it. So the small farmers less than two acres in this example would be betwixt and between. Couldn't become IAL if they wanted to be because they couldn't afford it. My question is, wouldn't it be simpler that to have a very simple opt out process for these small farmers that, that, that they could, they don't have to hire a bunch of lawyers just to say, I don't want to be included and give them that option. Why wouldn't that work? Well, 
Well, on the uh, as you explained it again, I'm not uh, I'm not the um, 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 expert in in any well we are fashioned with the uh, the pr pr procedural requirements, but I generally speaking uh, the the concept that you just expressed sounds uh, in, that sounds reasonable and Thank opt you. out, but to in order to uh, to accomplish that, and if there's any other uh, things that need to be attended to in accomplishing accomplishing that, uh, you know, the, it, everything is a everything we handle nowadays is a pretty much a double edged sword. And I'm as a, as being here in the Department of Agriculture and not not having any regulatory authority whatsoever, uh, we we are continually a, a, aware of that 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 um, the hazard of uh, of um, just jumping into uh, a, a concept and seeing that it sounds like a great idea without fully um, going over it. Uh, I, I'd, be, um, I'd be remiss if I, if I, if I did that uh, uh, without studying it, then I'll leave it there. So notwithstanding all the caveats you expressed at the end there, the concept sounds reasonable to you is what you said. He said, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but that, I think that's what you said. Yes, the concept is um, attractive. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. Thank you, Commissioner Axon. Just, uh, just a, a, a quick question. If a property owner decided to opt out, would that change their agricultural zone designation? Because right I know. now they're agriculture, zone agriculture. If they're all up out, then what happened? You're uh, from, from from what I understand, the discussion is that you're opting out of um, the opportunity to uh, to uh, get access to the important agricultural lands incentives, the existing ones, not the ones that are coming from the city, but the existing ones. Uh, and, and that's it, as 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 expressed by the other uh, by by uh, by by you know by, by the city and um, and by office of planning. Uh, this is a resource overlay. The whole idea of well, important agricultural lands is to give that the uh, the opportunity to to uh, to to keep the, to to to, uh, to to remain in in agricultural um, uh, uh, ag operation. To remain in operation or to to engage in it, uh, a new farmer, for instance, to engage in uh, new farming, uh, the, and that's what the, this incentive layer or not incentive, this resource layer is intended to do. Uh, if you opt out, that means that the, that landowner and farm or and farmer on that property that opts opts out uh, will not have access to. Uh, do I have an example? Um, an important. Well, uh, that that incentive, the, the one particular incentive that's uh, most uh, that br brings them, that generates the most attraction is that uh, important agricultural lands qualified agricultural costs, basically a, a, a partial cost offset for the expenses incurred, qualified expenses occurred on the property that is designated as important agricultural lands. Uh, it's a, it's a percentage of of basically what is spent. On in terms of improvements, the qualified improvements on the property in support of, of, of agricultural production. The, the person that opts out will not have access to that, that incentive. Uh, I, I, I don't, to date, I don't think there are any strings attached. Uh, I mean, I'm the guy that signs off on the, the tax, the tax credit when it uh, comes through here uh, through our office for our review and then eventually passing off to the Department of Taxation for their final um, uh, adjudication, whatever they call it. So that that incentive is, is I, I feel is really important to all scale of farmers, every all scale of farmers. And I, I think that alone will 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 help you know, reduce the expense, uh, expense of continuing operations as well as establishing new operations, uh, especially here on, uh, on Wahoo, where, where land and other resources 
related to agricultural production are so expensive. I'm sorry I went on so long, but I wanted to make sure that I uh, complete the thought. So they, uh, in the Nara Wars, the property remains zone agriculture. If we change that, they have to come back to whoever prop, uh, uh, less than, you know, to the city to use the property for something else than agriculture. If they want to use it, uh, if it's designated as important agricultural lands, the, the, the landowner can, uh, can come in and, uh, you know, seek, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, I don't know how likely it would be, but uh, a change to the, uh, to the uh, sustainable communities plan, uh, a, a, a change to the zoning um, as uh, with respect to uh, what, uh, a, a, a boundary amendment to come before either the, the, the planning commission or, or the, and or the, the land use commission. Uh, it, it doesn't prohibit it. It requires a, a few more considerations, um, kind of poorly explained in in HRS, but uh, it, it doesn't uh, prevent. Answer my question. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Commissioner Axon. Thank you, Mr. Yamamoto. Further questions for the Department of Agriculture? Seeing none. Thank you very much, Mr. Yamamoto. You're welcome. Uh, Ms. Apuna, just going to offer you the opportunity to rebut or address any further things before we move into deliberation. Um, I would just, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about the questions about uh, not caring about the people or not. And so I just want to say that I think this whole effort is to help this island and the communities within it to to achieve agriculture and if there's for some reason a feeling that we don't care or um, we completely disagree with any of the misinformation that was put forth and uh, we completely um, believe that this IL is supposed to be beneficial and not restrictive or a land grab or anything of that sort or to evict people like that's ridiculous it's it's supposed to help people farm their land or to think about farming um, and to help um, help basically have the, this county move forward to be um, sustainable in agriculture. So I just wanna say that. I would like to allow um, DPP staff, if they have anything else to add or um, say that, um, if they could say anything at this point. I would allow that. Would that be Ms. Wong? Yes, or um, Hans. Uh, yes, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, what um, Deputy Director said that um, the intent of IAL is to incentivize agriculture and you know, we've been putting in um, policies in our long range plan. Some of them are um, in process right now, which calls for preserving and encouraging and supporting agriculture. And this could be um, a really helpful tool in helping us move forward in implementing our policies and in uh, um, developing tools, you know, as, as like incentives and things of that sort. So, uh, anything else for us? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is that it, Ms. Lapuna? Yes, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, is there no further questions? I'd like now to enter into discussion with regard to this matter. Commissioners, please keep in mind that should the commission conclude in the course of our discussion, that the county has met the requirements of chapter 205 HRS in preparing its recommendations, a motion to proceed is not required to move to the next stage on this matter. However, should one or more of the commissioners believe that the county has not met the requirements of chapter 205, a motion should be made. And that motion should include the specific reasons as to why the commission should not proceed and directing the county 
or any other parties to the correct the deficiencies and resubmit their recommendations to the commission once it has done so. We will now conduct formal deliberations on the matter before us. All the parties and the public, I would remind you that during deliberations, I will not entertain additional input from the parties or the public unless those individuals or entities are specifically requested to do so by me. If called upon, any questions, answers will be limited to the question at hand. Commissioners, let me confirm that each one of you have reviewed the record and are prepared to deliberate on the subject docket. After I call your name, please signify with either an I or a nay that you're prepared to deliberate on this matter. Commissioner Chang. Aye. Commissioner Cabral. Aye. Commissioner Giovanni. Aye. Commissioner Ohigashi. Yes. Commissioner Axon. Yes. Commissioner Wong. Aye. The chair is also prepared to deliberate on this matter. Commissioners, we are in discussion. What is your pleasure? Chair, I have a question. This is Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Wong. Okay, so, you know, uh, try, try, I need, I need some assistance on this one, Chair. Um, if we remand it back, uh, if someone makes a motion to remand it back, we have to say, we are remanding it back to the county because we feel it's insufficient in these areas. That is that correct? So um, that is yeah. correct. I, I also believe, um, and this is my opinion as the chair, that we could conclude that even if the commission, or even if we believe the county technically met all of the requirements that based on other findings that the process overall is flawed and we recognize that while the county may have met the legal requirements that we would seek further action from the legislature to clarify matters or some combination thereof so Going, going to that portion that you just said about the legislature. So if we remand it back saying, please, we have these issues, but we also would like you and OSP or Farm Bureau, or whoever to work with the legislature to clarify these points. Yes, now- we can do that. We can do that. Now, let, let me say like, so like, we don't actually have the power to force the city to go to the legislature, right? <laughs> Right. But we can make a, I think it is completely within our powers to make a finding that says, you know what, they implemented a bad law. Um, and they, you know, they did so in good faith. They did so with hard work. Maybe we'd have done some things be better or worse, or we could find some combination like we don't think they did everything well. So we're remanding it back, but we would highly advise them before you start working on it again, let's all go to the legislature because there's certain things that we believe are flawed about this statute. Okay, so chair, um, I, if no one's going, oh, go ahead. I, there are a couple hands. So yeah. do you, you want to keep going off. or you want me to, no, okay. I'll hold off, thank you, chair. Commissioner Giovanni. So chair, when you gave your initial instructions for deliberations, I was troubled because you put us into a very narrow box that said we had to give the specific reasons why DPP may, did not check the box properly. Maybe they should have put an X instead of a check mark or whatever. And I thought that is very narrow for us. So I was really pleased to hear your further explanation as a second option in response to Commissioner Wong, which I think really goes, in my view, to the heart of the matter here, which is, did DPP do a reasonable job, however they interpreted that job, checking the boxes in a flawed process? Or, is, or do we need to go dig deeper into this thing and get more fundamental about how to fix the overall thing? I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, so I'm really pleased that you have elaborated on what our options might be. And thank you for that. I apologize if my initial instructions were not broad enough. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. Commissioner Ohigashi. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not making a motion, but what I'm asking is a question. Assuming that 
on the other side, assuming that we accept the recommendations, assuming that, the procedure, well, who would be the petitioner in this matter? Would it be Land Use Commission? And will our staff be required to do the work? Will it be OSP, OPSD? I keep calling it PTSD. PSD, because they're the planning arm, state. Or will it be city and county? For the purposes of deliberations, I'd like to direct our executive officer to respond to that inquiry from Commissioner Ohigashi, specifically who would who would appear essentially to justify any recommendations. I, I'm not sure um, exactly who, to be honest with you. Um, OPSD is generally responsible for policy. Um, Land Use Commission is generally responsible for effectuating that policy. Um, I believe that in reality, um, it would be a joint effort by OPSD and the Land Use Commission along with the Department of Agriculture. Michelle Higashi, you may follow up. Oh, thank you. I'm just curious. Okay. Commissioner Axon, thank you, Mr. Ardenker. Commissioner Axon. Yeah, just, just a follow up on Commissioner Higashi's uh, a question uh, or inquiry. Uh, that's my another question. If for somehow we accepted the series recommendation, what is the next process? What is the next step? Who's gonna do what? Or how long is it gonna take? All those kinds of stuff that, you know, uh, is gonna come into play after this, if we decided to make this, you know, uh, uh, accept the recommendation. Uh, the chair does not know. Well, I guess uh, executive officer. Mr. Oradenker, again. And I have the same response as the chair. I, I don't have, I mean, it, it, this is up to the city. Commissioner Cabral, followed by Chang, followed by Wong. Anybody know? Oh. No. No. Um, thank you, Chair and fellow commissioners. I, I'm really not comfortable in, in trying to fix this um, problem and have send, and, and, and I don't believe that the um, city and counties in a sense capable of, of doing it better at this point in time. And I say that because I'm not a um, government bureaucrat or a lawyer or something that's smarter, but I do know that, um, uh, and, and I am I'm concerned about somewhat of the attitude that we've just expressed already that we've checked the boxes. And so if technically, and it's been expressed by many of you, would they technically, done what they're supposed to do in their opinion. Well, clearly then we don't have the right boxes that there's that we need to reset the boxes that have to be checked. I mean, from, from the prior hearings, the fact that they didn't track on the ownership of 1,800 people. I used to manage Paradise Park, 8,835 owners. I kept track of all the time. If the, if the Bureau of Conveyances doesn't talk to or they don't have a good system for the city and county to get data from the Bureau of Conveyances. You can get it through the Board of Realtors. They're a commercial operation. You can just get that data. You can get it in constant ownership and constant address form. So you can constantly stay in touch with, with these owners because we do it to make a living. So we don't get a paycheck unless we do this right. So I'm, I'm concerned that the government's perspective on it, and, and not to be, I'm not personal, I think, 
Miss Apuna, Miss Cato, all these folks are wonderful people, but I'm, I'm concerned that it's just that it's an, a, it's an arm's distance kind of thing. It just doesn't matter. I did what I was supposed to do. Gravely concerns me. I'm a rancher. You know, I have cattle, I have horses, three now, dogs, cats, sheep, and goat all at my property. So, um, and um, I'm not sure I make any money. I think I lose money all the time, but I eat well. So, so I'm concerned though that that this this whole arm this approach has been so badly done. So I think I really want to support that we send it back to the legislature and we the land use and hopefully city and county as the first county that's tried to tackle this problem and comply with the law. God bless them for trying that we try and give better guidelines or some kind of better language. So when it comes out again, or maybe the language has to be that the Department of Agriculture is capable of working with LUC or some entity and because things change over time too. So I am really not, don't wanna send it back. I wanna deny the whole thing that CD and County has done in, in some way, shape or form and get it to the legislature to have it improved upon and corrected. I got Commissioner Cabral. Thank you. Commissioner Chang. Um, yeah, in reading the attorney general's opinion back to us, um, and this is in response to Commissioner Ohigashi's question. As I read page nine, it says, as discussed above, a quasi-judicial proceeding will require the LUC to one, conduct an independent review of the extent to which the proposed IAL lands meet the statutory criteria and determination that IAL designation is necessary to meet the broader objectives and B, apply a quasi-judicial proceeding to provide an appropriate degree of due process. So as, as I read that, and, and we've also got our deputy AG here, but as, as I read their guidance to us, if, if, if we decide to, to accept the counties um, that they've complied, then the matter comes to LUC and we conduct a separate hearing and determine what is, you know, essentially what is due process. But it does appear as if LUC will be responsible to providing everybody notice, to applying the criteria, because now the determination of, and it's, and both, I think, um, both the county, the city and OPSD concur that ultimately it's LUC that makes the determination of IAL. So it would appear as if we would end up doing a whole, almost like a whole de novo review. We would take what the county's given us, but we would have to do out notices, determine what's, what's due process, um, hear the those who object, um, I mean, that's how I read what the AG's opinion has said, is that that would be LUC, and then anybody who wants to challenge it, then we would have separate proceedings on that. But Dan is here, he can clarify if I'm misreading that. Um, um, <coughs> no sorry, which, which, which Dan? Oh, Dan Morris, our deputy AG, if I'm misreading it. Mr. Morris, followed by Mr. Ordenker, followed by Commissioner Axon. No, I, I think the opinion speaks for itself. And I think that's accurate that the LUC would be tasked with an independent review of the criteria. The statute is pretty clear about that, as well as the comment that they would have to determine what level of due process in terms of notice and an opportunity to be heard would be uh, given to any individual landowners. It, it doesn't mean it would be a full-blown trial type contested case hearing, um, but there, there is a, a spectrum of due process that can be given. So I think that's a fair reading of the AG opinion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ordenker? Um, I, yeah, I, I would agree with what Dan said, but from a practical standpoint, and this goes back to what I was saying before, what would happen <clears throat> would be that we would have to have the commission make a determination which would require OP 
and DOA and the county to give us an argument on, uh, on that particular issue. Um, we would guide, staff would guide, uh, help guide the, um, the specificity on the issues that we needed to have answered before the commission. Um, but the commission itself will be making the determination based on the arguments presented by the three parties. Commissioner Axon. I also have the same understanding and uh, uh, interpretation. And that's where so on my earlier statement. Uh, I said that looks like the commission is gonna, if we accept the recommendation, uh, looks like the commission is gonna be ending up doing all the work which the city should have done uh, by themselves. Because my, my question now is, do we have enough resources to do all those work? How much gonna cost? How much you know, uh, manpower uh, needed to do this? If we don't have all those, then we are, uh, our hands are kind of pretty much tied. Um, Mr. Ordenker, would you like to respond to the staffing resources, even on the broadest brush estimate? Um, I, I have no way of making a broad brush estimate. I, I do, I will tell you that we're, we're already, you know, at capacity. Um, <clears throat> this is something we would have to handle. The reason I don't have a broad brush, even a broad brush estimate, is that the initial determination that would have to be made is how much due process do we have to give? Once we know how much due process we have to give, we know how extensive the hearings would be. And <clears throat> the second question that we would have from a staffing standpoint is how many people are actually gonna come in and object? Is it gonna be 50 people? Is it gonna be 100 people? Is it gonna be 200 people? Or is it gonna be 10 people? We don't know the answer to that. But my, my guess, if I had to do a wild guess, would be that it's gonna it's gonna tie up a lot of resources for a significant amount of time. <clears throat> Commissioner Wong. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, you, you know, um, I, I'm gonna just make a motion, sorry, Chair, uh, to remand it back. Um, I, I understand where Commissioner Axon was going in terms of his thoughts, Commissioner Ohigashi, but I just gotta, I just want to make a motion already to remand back, um, remand it back to the county. Uh, just because, sorry, I kind of you know how articulate I am, so I'm going to try put it in a nutshell, and you can clean it up if possible. Um, remand it back to the county. Just because you know, I think the time issue was just too long from when they finished to not to give it to us. That, as you said, properties has changed you know, hands, plus, you know, there's other things like due process, um, the community outreach, yes, but like for me, I live in IEA and I don't remember any farms in IEA already, <laughs> but there may be, but I'm just saying that. Um, representations that were made by different individuals and organizations or even attorney firms was unclear or scared people that should be cleared up. And also, you know, let's do the stuff about the legislature. Try and tell the county, Farm Bureau, and whoever else to work and clear the statute up. You know, try and work it out and make it a mandated, uh, fun, funded mandate, not an unfunded mandate. So all those things, you know, I, I want to put in uh, somehow, Chair. So if, if you can, well, hopefully I get a second and then we can work it out. Thank you. Thank you for the motion, Commissioner Wong. Commissioner Ohigashi. A second. Okay. Uh, did you want to add anything to the discussion? I, the chair has a few thoughts. Uh, yeah. No. Um, no, chair. I'm not for me. Let you guys talk about it. Thank you. Commissioner Ohigashi. I don't have any other thoughts. Okay. So I, I do have thoughts, but I'm not. <laughs> I will express them when I decide how I'm going to make sure how I'm going to vote. So I, I believe that specifically under 205.47 Part D, 
The statute says upon identification of potential lands to be recommended to the county councils as potential important agricultural lands, the counties shall take reasonable action to notify each owner of those lands by mail or posted notice on the affected lands to inform them of the potential designation of those lands. I believe at least in that narrow sense, that was, that was not met. And I believe the evidence in our proceedings supports that contention. Um, but I guess my intent just to expand a little more before recognizing Commissioner Chang was, actually, I'll, I'll just, I'll stop there. I'll recognize that I have some larger things to say about the process and um, my general admiration for what DPP has tried to do and the problems, but I will save those for later. Commissioner Chang. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, I, um, I concur with your assessment. I think from a legal standpoint, reasonable notice is a very objective term. I think I, in my mind, I think the city met the reasonable notice test prior to 20, maybe up until 2015. They conducted at least three public meetings. Um, they had a website focus groups. However, that gap, um, I think I think the chair raised some some important issues regarding. Sorry, my Alexa turned on for no reason. So I I think I think there is a legal deficiency in the reasonable notice that I think that the city could have easily sent out, similar to what and that would be my instruction to the city and and elaborating on this motion is that um, the city be instructed to send out and given the responses, um, it, it would be in their best interest so they don't have to do it over again by certified mail to the landowner with a notice on there that this is, that if you choose to sell this property, that you are on notice to provide the new landowner um, and, um, information regarding the po a potential IAL designation. I think at a minimum, there should be a, a, a re-notification to all of the landowners. Attached to that notification should be a fact sheet or a brochure, what IAL designation means, what it is and what it isn't. Very simple. There should be a, a, a website similar to what you had done previously but it should be updated and it should be maintained. But in addition to that, I think the community outreach should be in collaboration with um, the, the Farm Bureau who has been willing to express, who has expressed a commitment to work with the, with the city on this. So I think undoubtedly um, consultation needs to be expanded. I think we've, you know, I, I've listed two things that Lisa certified mail to the landowner of record and and you get a response um, where they have to they have to sign so you've got a record that they have received it if you don't receive a response by 30 days i'd post something on the property and i take a picture of it but i'd include some some information i'd work with the farm bureau on doing an educational campaign about iel but i'd also for purposes of the city begin to start developing those incentives. Throughout today's hearing, I heard the city mention several times that the incentives were supposed to help small farmers, but there are no incentives. And the small farmers are the ones who have come to us. So to me, a timing on those incentives are critical. Perhaps some of these small farm owners would choose to, to, to have their lands designated. But I would also ask the city to consider OP and Department of Ag's recommendation about two acre parcels and explore that more, more clearly and carefully. So that would be, because I think, I think they, their TAP, their, I think they did apply the criteria properly. I think our AG opinion confirmed that. So I don't have a problem with the criteria that was applied by the city. 
Um, however, in light of Department of Ag and OPSD's recommendation for the two acre exemption, I think that should be visited as well, as well as an update on state lands. And um, I think as was mentioned numerous times today, including in that letter, a request for an exemption. If you want to opt out, send us a sign, send this, send this letter back to us. Make it easy for them. Don't make it hard. But um, I, I, I do believe that there has not been, um, that the statute has not been, uh, the city has not adequately complied with the reasonable notice requirement. And so those are my guidance on instructions on what they could do. I'm sure others have more to add to that, but that's my recommendation. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Chang. Commissioners, we're in deliberation with a motion before us. Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to support the motion. Um, I first want to uh, share my feelings that I think that the staff at DPP did an incredible amount of work under trying circumstances. Uh, it's tough to be a bureaucrat processing these type of things, especially on an unfunded mandate. Um, I think a lot of the problem that we're been, we've been discussing just even in the last 15 minutes stems from the fact that the staff completed their work four years ago, three and a half, four years ago. And the city council sat on it for three years or took three years to process it. That's terrible. We need to send that message. Why, why, would, why did that happen? And how many times were those people reelected and they're different people and they start over? So that, that was a real problem for me. Um, I agree that, that there, ought to, there should have been thought to giving a requirement for a disclosure document in a, any and all real estate uh, transactions that the subject land was uh, to be, was being under consideration for her automatic IAL designation. The fact that that, dis those, that disclosure did not occur and you're not gonna, it's not required. Real estate agents aren't gonna voluntarily give it because it's a disincentive for the sale. So I think that that's a real missing part. I also feel that, and again, I'm speaking for the small landowners that and small farmers that may not want to participate in this, but there might be small ones that do want to participate in that. I think it's a real uh, missed opportunity to, pr to provide a provision for a simple opt in or opt out. I want to opt in to the county's process that potentially will designate me for IAL, or I want to opt out, leave me out of it. That could have, a, that simple thing alone would have led to a a lot of these problems going away and a lot of the concerns that we heard from the community. And finally, uh, I also agree that the incentives should be clearly earmarked and specified ahead of time, including ahead of time when you're asking me to opt in or opt out. So like Commissioner Chang said, there should have been prepared a very simple document. What is IAL? What does it mean? What does it mean to you as a landowner? And Along with that, if you opt in, what are the what's what happens if you opt out? What are you giving up in terms of incentives? All of that should be upfront, not as DPP is now saying. We'll work that out later. I don't agree with that. And then finally, as Commissioner Axon is so clearly uh, worried about, and I worry as well, um, if we accept this, which I do not. I support the motion, so I'm not recommending we accept it, the recommendation from the county. But if we would, which is the other alternative, I think it turns the, the, the Land Use Commission, almost regardless of what level of or complexity of due process is afforded each landowner, but it turns our mission into a completely different process. We become a different bureau of, of the county. And then finally, um, I'm worried about the neighbor counties. They're watching this. And they, they're they like, 
you, you want me to do what? And you're not going to pay me for it? I know my county is, is, is hasn't started on it. And then, and so uh, it ain't happening. And it's not going to happen until this thing is resolved. And I mean, when I mean resolved, it's like Commissioner Wong saying, send a very strong message to the legislature to revisit this and clean it up so that it can be implemented more straightforwardly. Uh, I will support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. I'd like to um, call on our executive officer and then hear from Commissioners Ohigashi and Axon. I'm sorry, Chair. Is there a specific question you might be answering? You raised your hand again. I swear, I am not <laughs> touching my keyboard. I swear. Okay. I am not touching my keyboard. Scratch that. Um, Commissioner Ohigashi, followed by Commissioner Axon. I'm, I made the second to the motion because, and I agree with what um, Commissioner Chang, the chairman, and then and Commissioner Giovanni has indicated on the record. And I believe those are all important parts of, this, of the reason why I'm voting. But I do want to recognize that by remanding this matter, it may result in the probable non-action by the city and county. If that is the case, it may cause a chilling effect on any other counties dealing with this matter. And if, if, that, is, and if that happens, then the incentive for large landowners to go into IAL designations may be affected because they're gonna say, why worry about it? Shooting down the county, we get, you know, we don't have to go and do our, our large. Thing. I do it, but I'm still going to vote for it for this. And the reason why is what the chair brought up, and what what he indicated is that what is this IAL designation really is? What is it? When we were able to put an industrial use on IML property prior to it being changed on Maui, it came to it came to light to me is that why are we even designating these lands? What's to stop people from using the special permit process to, to use this property for industrial purposes without going through the process? changing. And that's why I'm willing to vote for this. And that's why I'm willing to take the risk that this may affect all I, um, designations in the future. Because after seeing that happen, I've come to the conclusion that the legislature needs to fix this. And if this is what it takes, so be it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Ohigashi. Commissioner Axon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Given, given the options that we have in front of us, uh, there is no really an ideal option that we can pick without you know, uh, going into what Commissioner Ohigashi is saying taking the risk. So I will be re reluctantly uh, supporting this motion. But having said that, well, at least, you know, moving forward with this motion, we make a decision rather than doing nothing. But having, having said that, I just wanna make a comment that, you know, I believe DPP, Ms. Uh, Puna Dam, did their best in trying to address this matter. And I, I, I was kind of struck on what uh, Ms. Apuna said that, you know, we feel that DPP or city doesn't care for the people. I, I, don't, I don't honestly believe that. I believe that they are, uh, they did their best. They followed, you know, they followed the, the, the law 
um, regardless of you know uh, financial help or funding that they have. So you know, I just want to thank DPP, Ms. Apuna, for all their efforts that they put in on this one. It took, took a lot of years, and I just didn't want to diminish those efforts that they, they put in. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Axon. Commissioners, is there further deliberation? Commissioner Cabral. Uh, yes, thank you all. I, this is just really um, hard. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll support the motion because it, it, it obviously it's going to give us all another bite at the apple unless our terms expire before it comes back around. But uh, yeah, and, I, and I'm really hopeful that it, that land use staff, even us as individual commissioners might have ideas and when we and that don't have to be on an official basis, just maybe we start an outline of suggestions that have already been mentioned here, just throwing it back to them. Like, I like the idea of it making it simple, check, opt in, opt out. Again, it's got to comply with the, the requirements, which apparently, you know, are, are the other side of this. But I also, my preference would be that you have to opt in. You know, that would be my, as a landowner, if I don't pay attention, I don't read the English, I don't understand this stuff. I think if the person doesn't opt in after three attempted notifications or something, then you just, then you leave them out. And otherwise everybody's got to opt in. Otherwise they don't stay in it. And I know you want the land to be contiguous, but there's a lot of one acre parcels and two acre parcels and what have you that are never going to be egg. And all you're going to do is restrict these people's ability to in the future add houses or do anything else with it that would be make the land more, more usable. And for a lot of land, the most valuable crop that we have is housing. And, and clearly we have a need for that. So I, I really hate the idea that we're just gonna find one um, big swatch of land and say, that's all it because of you're nearby some other good land. So I, I'd like to have them force it, force or have the county and city and county have people opt in. Otherwise they're not part of it, you know, they can, and again, it'd be so hard to go into your individual, but that's their opportunity. And I love the idea, like Commissioner Cheng said, have it all there, have the whole package, have the brochure, have the advantages, disadvantages, spoon feed me. I deal with people all the time, man. It's not what I say, it's what they hear that matters. And we need to make sure that it's written in such a manner that it's really simple. No legalese, no lawyers. Sorry, guys. You know, <laughs> you can send it to me. I can dummy it down. Trust me. If I can understand it, it'll be good. So I, I'll support it though, because at least it gives us an effort to continue to have them move forward if they can work with that and and uh, Department of Agriculture. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Chang. Yep. I'll just make a brief comment. Uh, Mr. Puna. Please, I did not, I know I was a little harsh. I do want to applaud the city. You were the first agency. You inherited a lot of this, I think. And I guess I just, you know, I, I know, how would I say? We've gotten to know you. We've gotten to know um, your good intentions. And as, as I've shared, um, I think you are, you are in a unique position I think even if this gets remanded back, I hope the city does, you know, seriously consider having this done in a collaborative way, reach out to the partners. And, um, and I think the next time it comes back to us, which I hope it does, that I think at that point in time, there'll be less criticism and greater support through education. And if it takes a long time through the planning commission, I find what may be helpful is at least to provide the landowners an update. Let them know where you are. You may not have to, you know, you don't have to do a, a public meeting, but at least provide them an update. I think that's what people get fearful of is when they don't hear anything, they think something's, uh, something's gonna happen without them. So, I mean, I think throughout this process, um, and I'm hoping other counties are paying attention, but, um, I think the city has has set forth a good process. I think it's just we're helping to fine tune it. But I do want to acknowledge the good work of DPP, the courage it took to move forward, the courage it took for you sometimes 
to take a very hard position um, that reflect the agency, and I'm sure not necessarily your own personal position. But again, I think at the end of the day, this pause may end up making your work in the long run a lot easier. I hope it does at least. So thank you very much, you and your staff. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Chen. Commissioner Giovanni. Thank you, Chair. Pretty much on the same, same level, but I interpreted a key element of Commissioner Wong's motion was to, we're not only remanding this back or not accepting it, but to send it all the way back to the state legislature to, to get it fixed. So it's not, I don't want this action by our commission, at least I don't interpret our action or by our commission by supporting this motion or passing this motion or adopting this order to be one that the county failed. I don't think they failed at all. I think they did their job and they, they did a pretty good pretty good job at it with the exception of the thing sitting at the city council for three plus years i think the real issue is the fundamental writing of the of the statute and it can be fixed probably without too much difficulty and i would imagine that in a collaborative way the entity that has the most to offer about how to fix it would be dpp because they've tried to live it and I would welcome their candid involvement with others to, to get back to that level, because I think that's where, where it needs to go. So again, like Doc, Commissioner Chang had expressed and others had expressed, I want to thank the DPP for their efforts over the years to make this thing workable and to get to this point. But there's far more problem going to happen going forward adopting this than sending it back and I support sending it back. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Giovanni. Commissioners, anything further? Um, if not, I'll just share my final remarks um, before calling on the, our executive officer to read the motion and um, take a roll call vote. Um, I'm reminded of a, a period um, um, or a time in my life earlier where I acquired a piece of furniture from Ikea and it both had the wrong directions and a mismatched set of parts. And there was one frustrating day <laughs> trying to get this freaking thing together. There was no way with those instructions and those parts and the wrong tools to make this thing work. And it took a huge amount of time to realize, oh, here's what's going on. I got to send it back. Um, that's where we're at. Um, I, I, I want to join in, thank DPP, and also call out DOA. Like, you've tried to make this work with the tools and things at hand. Uh, my, my, my criticisms were merely really limited to the, um, I think people need to hear from the public that you get that they're frustrated. And it's really important. And I didn't hear that. And then it was said, so that was important. But I acknowledge the many years of work that DPP did. Um, the thing that gives me pause is not the exact same thing as other parties. The one thing about voting in favor of this, it, it, frankly, I have come to the conclusion after almost eight years on this commission that IAL overall is fundamentally flawed. It does not do much for Hawaii, for agriculture, except for a few large farmers landowners. I think it's deeply flawed and needs to be really redone. So it doesn't give me pause to um, send it back for that reason that this might stall the process. What gives me pause is that I think this could be seen as rewarding what, and maybe I've been too polite about it, what I really perceive as bad behavior from a private law firm who I think was trolling for clients. Now I know some people are like, hey, we're super, super grateful that we heard from that law firm, but the language that was used in that letter was almost, but not entirely inaccurate. That letter said things like, um, the IL laws will significantly impact and diminish your rights to use your lands. There's a question that they might in a very, very small way do so. And it's actually why we need the legislature to clarify whether or not that is the case. 
is the housing different or is it not? If they say it's no different, if they adopt the thing, that argument goes away. There was an argument or a statement in the letter that said, um, how you need to know how to best protect your land use rights. Um, these things were inflammatory. And if the city made a critical error, it was not directly getting out in front of that letter at multiple levels, DPP, mayor, and others to just say, listen, we're responding to that. We know you heard what you said. Here's what's going on. Um, I don't want our rejection to be seen as a reward of that kind of behavior. Um, but the only way to deal with that, and this is why I want the city to come back, but I need us to go to the legislature too, is to clarify these errors or critical points of dispute in the law um, so that they're very clear and that nobody else can take advantage of the ambiguity going forward, because otherwise we'll find ourselves in the same place. Commissioner Cabal. That concludes my statements after Commissioner Cabral. And if there's any other statements from thank the commissioners, you. I will call for the vote. Okay, no, thank you. For if I, uh, I'm appreciating what I hope is the correct clarification from both you and uh, um, you as chair and uh, Commissioner Giovanni. And I, so I wanna really verify with Commissioner, I'm trying to find you guys on these screens. Commissioner Wong, there you are in front of your golf course or something. Anyway, so as the maker of the motion, you're sending it back, meaning both to the legislature as well as the city and county to rework it. Is that what we are really voting on? Because I'm in, definitely in favor of sending it back to the legislature. Mr. Yeah, Ordecker, or no. Commissioner Wong and Mr. Ordecker. Uh, Commissioner Cabral, it's a, it's a both um, because of the leg it's it's a flawed statute to me, like everyone else said. Plus, but I think the process took too long, and a lot of the as chair said, there was a lot of disinformation out there that could have been done properly. And what Commissioner Chang said, so it's it's like two, it's a, a motion with everything. It's like a mulligan stew or whatever you want to call it. That that's all. Okay, that and then the only other thing I want to say, and I don't I don't get to see if anybody's of the public is still out there. That I hope that we are this going back and forth for three plus hours since anyone else got to talk was. They hope they they understand that they can whew, rest, breathe for a little while. Nothing's going to happen to their land. They don't lose it. Nothing's going to nothing bad's going to happen to their land at this point in time. They should get, receive a whole lot more communication and a whole lot more um, time and effort. And it's going to come back through this body before it everything anything else happens. So I, I want the public to realize that their efforts in coming forward and communicating to us this hearing and the other hearings and in writing have in a sense made a big difference in what's going on. So that would be my last comment aside from a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cabral. Commissioner Ohigashi. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say this. Arnold, are you using the word mulligan too because you're on a golf course? <laughs> but that, that, being, that being said, I just wanted, uh, I don't think that we can command anybody to go to the legislature or remand it to the legislature. It's a state law. So what we can do, I would imagine, is that suggest to the uh, Farm Bureau who had indicated that, they, that, that this area should be cleared up as well as the city that they, that as well as our own executive director that if they can, if we can see whether or not we can submit amendments to the existing land use law to clear this matter up. But uh, that may be a separate motion or that may be part of this motion, but I, I don't think we can technically remand it to the legislature. Thank you. Um... Mr. Ordenker, why don't you read the motion as it appears before us before, then I'll ask you separately to call for a vote. Okay, <clears throat> it's been moved by Commissioner Wong that we remand the matter back to the county because of time issues, due process uncertainties, community outreach defects, 
representations made by attorneys and others that need to be clarified and that, and to note that the statute needs to be revised and clarified and that requests that the legislature make it, make it a funded mandate. Um, and so I'm gonna, are we comfortable taking the vote commissioners? Okay. Mr. Ordanker, please call for the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion is as stated. Commissioner Wan. Aye. Commissioner Ohigashi. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Giovanni. Aye. Commissioner Chang. Aye. Commissioner Cabral. Aye. Commissioner Axon. Yes. Chair Schroeder. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion passes unanimously with seven votes. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for a difficult and long process. Um, I believe there's no further business. So we're leaving with, I think, 101 people in attendance, 83 um, members of the public. Um, there being no further business, I, I thank the parties and declare this meeting of the Land Use Commission adjourned.